Hi, Happy New Year! <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Mousemus, Happy New Year. Blaholtzen, Happy Crimson Katoos Day. Oh, sorry. I'm just rearranging stuff. Okay. <laughs> Amberzine, thank you for the subscription. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Uncle UEF, thanks for the follow. Yay, we're back. We're back. Vilkun, good evening once again and as always tonight. Yes, first stream of 2022. Welcome back. We did it. We got through 2021. Um, another one down, another one to go. <laughs> Deluxe Talks. Deluxe Talks says, I'm off my game, guys. I almost forgot about Crimson Tuesday and remembered at the very last minute. Yeah, it's been two weeks, you know, I mean, when routines kind of go out the window during the holidays, it can be hard to get back into things. But here we are. Jim makes games. Happy Crimson Katoos Day. Good to see you. <laughs> Feels like a Monday. Proto Mill, Happy New Year. Good to see you. Judith Butler's Lover. Good to see you as well. We haven't, you haven't missed the trailer. I will play the trailer um, soon. I will, I'll, I will play it sooner than later because you're here and I don't want you to miss it. <laughs> Oh, her crabbiness! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for coming, her crabbiness! Oh my gosh! So this is awesome! Her crabbiness uh, used to do uh, YouTube Let's Plays, and her crabbiness is the one uh, I, where I first saw someone playing through Francisco Gonzalez's games, her, his Ben Jordan games. That's where I learned about them. And her crabbiness also did a fantastic Let's Play of The Colonel's Bequest. Uh, I love her Let's Play of The Colonel's Bequest. And you can't stay long, but you want to say hi. Uh, no, I'm just so happy you're here because um, something that people might not know is Nessa Crab in The Crimson Diamond is named after her crabby Ness. Her crabby Nessa, Nessa Crab. Because she was a huge inspiration for me when I was starting my game um, because, of, because of her YouTube channel. Um, so thank you so much for that. And that's why you, you'll live forever as Nessa Crab. And I did ask nicely to her crabbiness if, I, if that's going to be okay with her. <laughs> Evil Tentacle, good to see you. Happy Crimson Canoe Year. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Zim Makes Games has, feels like I haven't seen a Crimson Katoose Day all year. Ronald Dragster, good to see you. Happy New Year. Oh my gosh, Bill Coon, remember when I mentioned the Monkey Island Anthology box set from last year that you had to pre-order or miss out? You won't believe this, but my brother bought four of them. One for himself, one is Christmas presents for me and my sister, and one to keep. That's awesome, Bill Coon. Uh, yeah, I can actually, let's see. Um, if I can show that. Hold on. I think I still have it here somewhere. I've got, it's a mess, everything's a mess. Uh, here it is, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Turn off this one turn on this one yeah so this is the monkey island anthology box the 30th anniversary and as it so happens uh i did the ega portraits that you see kind of in the foreground here kind of blurry uh, of a bunch of the developers who were working at lucas arts at the time on the crim uh, the crimson diamond on on the monkey island games and so uh, if you have gotten the limited run game set you will see a bunch of um a bunch of portraits that i haven't been been able to share up till now I think I did either 12 or 14 other things in short order, um, but yeah, so that was fun. Um, and enjoy, enjoy if you've ordered one. And I know they they came out a little later than they would have liked, but uh, it's better late than never. Hey, Ophiroi, good to see you. <laughs> well, since it turns out a, a jacket I recently got at a uh, second hand has a convenient pocket hole for my keys to disappear into. Yeah, when they get into the lining of a of a of a coat good luck with that um second second least favorite thing is when you've got um like jogging pants that tie up at the front and then one of them kind of gets lost in the waistband so much fun to dig that out art for class good to see you happy 2022 happy 2022 oh wow so 30 years to the day when you opened monkey island 2 on christmas morning bill coon says we opened those that is so special bill coon that's amazing um and i guess i think it does come with the the secret of monkey island the ega version i believe because that's the one i'd want um being my favorite of those 
Grindislav, good to see you. Fun, fantastic. We were just talking, Grindislav, about your games. Um, her crabbiness was here just a little while ago, and she used to do Let's Plays of the Ben Jordan series, and I named Nessa Crab in my game after her crabbiness because she was a big inspiration for me um, because she played Francisco's games, and I looked and I said, oh my gosh, she's making games all by himself, and I want to do that too. So we're going to shout out. We're going to shout out uh, Grindislav Games, who of course is working on Rosewater right now. And he uh, streams on uh, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. He uh, streams uh, Wild West Wednesdays, which is fantastic. <laughs> yes, goodness love. She was you just missed her, I think. But yeah, she's so cool. I really loved her Let's Plays and stuff back in the day. Yes, and Ron Gilbert did sign individual. Oh, there she is. There's, there's her craviness. Wonderful, uh, wonderful um, adventure game reunion. <laughs> yes, Ron Gilbert individually signed every certificate of our authenticity, Bill Coon says, for the limited run games anthology package. <laughs> Deluxe Tux asks, does this mean you can bill Crimson Diamond as brought to you by the person behind Monkey Island? I think that's a bit of a stretch, but I can say brought to you by the person who uh, did some portraits for... The Monkey Island Anthology, I guess, but I don't know if a lot of people know about that outside of the hardcore gaming, hard, hardcore adventure gaming community. <laughs> yes, Anthology set. The special Carl, hello, welcome back. Good to see you. MPK, happy new year. Happy, happy new year. Oh, and Bill Coon also says, her crabbiness, thank you for starting games on YouTube. I think you might be the earliest Let's Player I know of. She was definitely one of the earlier ones that, that um, that I would watch. Oh my gosh! She, her craviness gave Grindislav a little handmade Cedric at, at GDC. Still have it at my desk. I love stuff like that. I love stuff like that. So, yeah, the thing about a lot of my characters in the Crimson Diamond is, um, I couldn't really be bothered coming up with a lot of my own names. So they're often like tributes to people and just, you know, whoever, whoever was really important to me at that time when I was starting it. And it's been a while, so that that's some of that stuff's older than I'd like to admit. Uh, but yes, today we are going to, yes, Happy Crimson Katusi, Happy New Year, Year of the Tiger. I actually wanted to show, I, I, I was a little bit later than I like to be starting today because someone mentioned New Year and I realized, yeah, I might as well show the, for this is for no points. Oh no, it's getting eaten by the, by the green screen. Hold on, I'm going to turn off the green screen just for this. Give me one second. Uh, da, 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 da. I just realized I can I can toggle the chroma key on and off. I learned that. Okay, so this is our hour. Happy birthday to my mom and happy year of the target 2022. Dido card. It says, Oh, uh, Otanjobi Omedeto, which is, is happy birthday. And we've got Dido, Dido Cat as a reverse tiger because Dido is a tuxedo cat. She's black and white. And uh, I've got, I've put the, the nice little dragon stripes on her. I'm dragon. <laughs> the nice little tiger stripes on her. And just some other kind of Japanese New Year accoutrement. Um, so yeah, that was that. That was this year. The first card of the year. And you guys get it for free. So there's that. Um, yeah, so every year. Um, come on, Chroma Key. Okay. Yeah, every year we do some like kind of Japanese New Year stuff. So we made mochi with the mochi maker, um, and we made mikasa manju, which are like red bean paste filled kind of pancake things. And the pancake is kind of made of sweetened pancake batter, among other things. But yeah, so uh, New Year's was nice. Oh, cool! Yes, Grindislav, uh, you showed on stream tomorrow. If someone reminds you, I'm gonna. I hope I'm gonna make it to stream, and I'll try to remind you if I if I do make it. Davor, good to see you. Yes, Deluxe Tux, those are uh, Mikan oranges, yeah. Because um, you, you'll find on, um, when you look up like Japanese New Year decorations, there'll be like a wooden platform like the one Dido's on. And there'll be like a few big, huge mochi, like big, huge rice cake things. And on top will be a Mikan, like a little orange. And so the idea is she's kind of made a mess of things. She's knocked over the oranges and she's playing around. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Massimus still remembers the previous year of the Tiger. That hit. That was 12 years ago. Last year, um, I did not do a, a special Happy New Year's birthday card for my mom, I don't think. 
I did one uh, when it was the year of the rat because my mum is the year of the rat and this one was because it was year of the tiger it just occurred to me I could make Dido a tiger um, but I've missed a few in between that's that update so yes a few updates that I can show you before we get into things so tonight's gonna be an art night I'm gonna do I'm gonna do pixel art in Photoshop the piece we're working on and uh, after that we're gonna play some personal nightmare where I did get unstuck so I'm looking forward to being able to show you guys that I'm probably going to put the clip on how I got unstuck on completely separate on its own because I feel like people who want to play personal nightmare with the walkthrough I think people will commonly get stuck on this part and I want there to be an online resource for them to get unstuck um, because I did manage it and with the help of a couple YouTube videos but I, ne I needed to do more figuring out than I would have liked so I'll be I'll be showing some of that probably at around depending on how I'm feeling uh, 1030 maybe 10 1030 maybe later depending on how the pixel art goes um, but yes so that's that and uh, uh, game update oh you know what I should probably uh, introduce myself and I'm gonna run the trailer because Judith Butler's lover is here and she's all about the trailer or they's all, they are all about the trailer um, yeah I am Julia Minamata I'm the adventure game dev behind the adventure game the Crimson Diamond and I'm still working on it um, which can be seen as a good thing and a bad thing like I'm still working on it but I'm still working on it so both of those things and I'm just going through some player feedback right now and that's been going well there's been some really 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 helpful feedback so I've, in I've started to incorporate some of it um, stuff like toggling off being able to toggle off autosave if you don't want it to toggle off the tutorial the tutorial windows that come up when you first play among other things so there will be a new version of the demo in hopefully the near future but um, first I have to get the beta out to players so we'll do that first um, but that's that I will run the trailer now it is a mystery adventure game it's kind of made it it's with the same color palette as this thing just over my shoulder and this thing being a screenshot from personal nightmare and uh, this was made in 1989 personal nightmare was the same year as the colonel's bequest which is the game the crimson diamond is very inspired by and um it's a text parser game, which is not that usual nowadays. Although there are some people um, making text parser games. And of course, I always shout out Phil Forte of Snail Trek. And also our own Slash Studio, who uh, is, I don't know if he's here yet, but um, he he's done Betrayed Alliance and is working on Betrayed Alliance 2. Um, but yeah, there are a few of us text parser people out there. And so that's what the game is. I'm going to run the trailer so you can get an idea of what that looks like and what it plays like. Uh, but yeah, uh, here we go with the trailer and after that I will show the new cross stitch that I've been started I started over the holidays like I was hoping that I'd, I'd get around to but um, Yeah, okay. We're gonna do the trailer uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yes trailer and enjoy Crimson Ontario was once a prosperous lively mining town But that was a long time ago now it's quiet nearly deserted, and some folks aim to keep it that way. Nancy Maple is an aspiring mineralogist assigned to follow the trail of a dazzling diamond. An intriguing cast of characters has converged under one roof, each meaning to get their own way, or else. Will Nancy untangle the mysteries and machinations before it's too late? Will the sleepy town of Crimson shine once more? Find out in The Crimson Diamond, an upcoming adventure game by Julia Minamata. The Crimson Diamond demo is available on Steam and Itch.io for Windows PC and Mac OS.
Mike's still on mute. Ah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And that's why Jim's cheering so much. Sorry about that. I'm going to have, I'll say that all over again. I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, rewind. Do we have an updated demo ETA? We do not. Hopefully February. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Before I had a joke, there's a band called 1,223 megabytes. They haven't had a gig yet. Judith Butler's lover spirit has been cleansed from the showing of the trailer. I cannot believe I did that. I'm clearly out of practice. Um, my camera is out of focus too. So the ring light did not help with that. <laughs> yes, it's the lip reading segment of the show. Muted. Thank you. Sorry. I, I'm just catching up on chat. I'm so sorry. But yes, it's for, I showed the, the, the card. Uh, and um, yeah, I was talking about the red and white show on television, which is a Japanese New Year celebration that they broadcast every year, which is the, the red team, the, the female team against the white team, the male team. I'm just going to catch up to make sure I'm not repeating myself. Okay, right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And so not only do they have this competition where they have different um, performers, male performers, female performers, male idol groups, female idol groups, etc. But they break every year their kendama uh, record Guinness Book of World Records. They have a kendama thing where a bunch of people line up in a row, uh, and then they the um, the kendama is like a wooden toy for kids that there's a string on one end that's got a ball on the end, and you have to flip up this the this the ball on the string to hit to be caught in the cup, and they're at 120 something plus in a row, and they beat their last year's record. The year before, someone someone messed up, and that was very sad. And it's very stressful because what what they'll do is. One of the guys, one of the men, one of the male singers, he's a really good kendama person, and so he'll see sings a song as they're going through from person to person, catching the ball in the kendama, and then he does the last one um, when he finishes singing. So they do it all the way, and he does the last one, and they they did beat their record from the previous year. So sorry, I'm still I still feel really bad. I'm just basically repeating everything I just said. I'm totally in the zone. I'm so sorry. And I, yeah, I, I think I fixed the camera now. Okay. <laughs> it would be rude to interrupt her at this point. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and Jim, yeah, I'm so sorry that the the, the bits did not help. <laughs> Judith Butler's lover says there's a long tradition of audio problems on the stream. Glad to see some traditions stay alive. I'm, yeah, Grunoslav, I'm just, I'm sad because I just had to repeat everything I just said and tried to make it sound like I didn't just say it twice to myself. <laughs> Julia Minamudia. <laughs> the, the worst part is how interesting the things she's talking about seem. I don't know about that. But I will say that on this year's Red and White show, they had a live performance of the Neon Genesis Evangelion theme song. And I don't know why they did it. Maybe because the third part came out came out but I feel like the third part came out in Japan way before last year so I don't know why they did it but it sounded like they had the the actual like the voice actors for a lot of the voice actors it sounded like they just recorded like a, a new line just for the show and I was totally blown away because they had Shinji's voice they had Asuka's voice they had Misato's voice they had uh, Ikari's voice um, and they also had a line where they said the name of one of the hosts for the Red and White show. So it sounded like a completely new line. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's the voice acting cast. And they had like um, inside the Ava where they sit down and there's like the trigger stuff and stuff. They had, they wheeled one of those onto the stage and they had a woman sing the theme song. It was fantastic. Yes, Gendo. Yeah, Ikari. Yeah, so it was fantastic. Um, so that's that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, you found the last die from a sad day of war. The cats knocked it under the oven. You can die happy tonight. I love your dice. They're awesome. Mm. Okay. Now that I'm, now that you can hear me, uh, let me check if there's anything else. Yeah, I, did I talk about the ring light already? Which, which I got over the new year. 
Um, so I got a ring, a ring light, and I keep on. I have a problem with the the, the ring versus rim, which was my problem with the ring world versus a rim world, because um, the books by Larry Niven is ring world i think but then there's a computer game called a rim world and i keep messing that up and i keep calling the ring light the, a rim light lord of the rims okay the the ring light feels cold the ring light feels cold okay so this one does have different um temperatures so i can cycle through some of these I think they just get colder though. So there's this one, which is even colder. There's this one, which is even colder. Ah, and the keying is terrible. That's, it's a nightmare. Ah, ah. That's not good. Um, and then this is the warmest one. <laughs> Ring, yes, ring light goes in front, rim light goes behind. Yeah, so, so <laughs> I turned to horrifying. Yeah, so we can uh, adjust. This is probably more accurate to what coloring would actually be like, but we certainly don't have to stick with that. I, I know you guys are used to a more kind of warm, cozy candlelight type of a look on stream, so we can definitely do that. I'm not against it. So we can do a color a color correction. Uh, so we can do that live on stream. We can do, I can do a hue shift. So this is kind of like a uh, space warlord organ trading simulator look. Although I will say the rim light does help with the edges of the keyed out, the keyed out edges really look better with the rim light. Ring light, <clears throat> ring light. Yeah, I think... Okay, so Ringworld is hard sci-fi about life. Rimworld is sci-fi about hard life. I read Ringworld, I'm pretty sure. Okay, um, but yeah, so there's a hue shift. So, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, we can kind of get to something warmer or greener or bluer. Um, but that's probably pretty good to what my skin tone actually is like uh, we could play with the saturation a bit color correction yeah helps you get the rest of the way it's true Eden anyway, it's good to see you um, I was just talking about how we're gonna do a um, hopefully you're still up for doing a Mac port of the demo the new demo when that happens um, yes how about rim world where everyone had blackberry phones Ah, Deluxe Talks finally played SWAT, Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator. Had a ton of fun. I think it's the best strange scaffold game to date. Awesome. Yeah, I mess with saturation. I don't tend to oversaturate though. I try I try to usually keep it pretty good. Um, but yeah, so I, I might um, make it a little bit more saturated. How about that? Um, but yeah, that's that's we'll go with that, I suppose. Um there's higher contrast, we can fiddle with the gamma. But I don't think we need to. That's pretty good. Contrast? No. Ah, it's pretty good. Yeah, so there is a new ring light, not a rim light. <sighs> Look, <laughs> I think it looks fine the way it was. Okay. Oh, wow. There's a new browser version of AGS. Web based demo now possible. Nice. Oh, good. Evil Tentacle. You've got a Mac. Fantastic. Yeah, you know what? I, I do tend to to lean toward saturating stuff usually as you can tell with the EGA palette like I'm just gonna that's my thing tap 2 GG good evening what well, happy new year <laughs> okay so oh yes the cross stitch so let's oh yeah I talk about the cross stitch I uh, will talk about the cross stitch but first I want to actually go back to this screen oh no encoding overloaded I don't know what that is um anyway I hope things are still okay uh bu -bu -bu -bu. But yeah, speaking of Space Warlord, um, I have a link to the Steam page for it. I did the pixel art. Bah, 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 bah. Um, I did the pixel art for Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator. Um, I've played it too, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, so this right now, so I was going to talk about the, the holiday card before I, I interrupted myself. I can't even blame Dan for interrupting me because I'm the only one here. But... Um, Oh, Jerma played it. Yeah, Jerma played it. Like 10,000 viewers at once on Twitch. Oh my goodness. He played it for four hours. 
It was great. Yes, well, wholesome. It was fun to watch Jerma play Space Warlord. Um, holiday card, yeah. The holiday card is printed and addressed. Everything is ready to get mailed. Um, but uh, uh, Ontario cases of COVID are a little bit um, out of control right now. I did get my booster on January the 4th. So um, in, I'll probably be well and good with, with my booster. I'll be well boosted um, soon enough. But I'm kind of avoiding any type of extra trips. And so we can still say that the holiday special offer is on because I have not, I haven't mailed them yet. So that's still there. So what that is, is if you're a $5 Patreon person, um, whenever you can just join tomorrow and I'll still mail you, mail you one of these things. Um, and it is uh, the new holiday card, which no one has seen yet. Um, when I mail them, then that the Patreons are the first ones to see the new card and they'll get last year's card as well and a postcard version of last year's card and both my postcards that I would print off and give out at events. There's a daytime and a nighttime version of the view of the Crimson Lodge, which is in the game and a sticker. So that, that is still all in play until I do get around to mailing these things, which uh, will be at some point when they decide they're going to start counting the case numbers in Ontario again or something, because they stopped. They just stopped. So I just assume it's not good. Oh, Michael Darkwolf, good evening. Good to see you. Oh, good. Okay, Dave. Well, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, if your mailing address has changed, just let me know. I can definitely, like, readdress your envelope. <laughs> you know what? How thrilled will you be to get a holiday card in March, if it does happen to be March? Right? I hope. Yeah, and excuse the fashionable lateness. Cosmic Void 3, speaking of fashionable lateness, yeah, I'm just talking about how my holiday cards are not sent out yet. Um, yeah. But good to see you. And your Kickstarter is starting, I saw on Twitter. So good luck with your Kickstarter. That's fantastic. Oh, oh, you have to. Oh, you have to wait for your booster. Okay, I see. And yes, Massimus, there's supposed to be music playing. Well done. I see. It's just I haven't done this for two weeks, and everything. You know, it's all gone to pieces. Ah, starting next week, the pressure. Oh, good. I'm glad, Michael Darko. I'm glad you're feeling better. Get well soon. Get all the way well soon. <laughs> Um, and of course, yes, there is a demo. The old demo for the Crimson Diamond is on Steam still, of course. Please wishlist it if you and play it, etc. If you like it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so moving onward. Oh, yeah, I was going to show the cross stitch. This is, I, I look over here because I have notes. Because I'll forget. And I do all the time. I forget to unmute myself. Too. That happens. Okay, so yeah, um, we have the... Oh, I'm going to turn the, the chroma key off to show this, because this one has a bit of green in it. It's not going to show up otherwise. Okay. Okay. New cross-stitch started over the holidays. Speaking of her crabbiness, actually, it's funny that she was here, because I am working on the Nessa Crab cross-stitch. Yeah, cut, I just a Jeffy, good to see you. Cut tonight's footage into a crimson blooper reel. <laughs> and just to give you an idea of all the other ones, so of course we have this Margot, and we have two versions of Nancy, um, and which use um, two different colors of of the the bright the bright red. So, but yeah, that's all of them put together. I think I can fit two more down here. Uh, so that'll happen. But yeah, I'm having a nice time getting her little distasteful smirk down. Mystery Capybara, good to see you. Oh, nice. Yes, evil tentacle, her crappy face is emerging from the darkness. Yes. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm the thing is, is I kind of think I'm settled on the colors that I'm using right now for the, um, for the cross stitching, but you kind of can't tell until you see the colors next to each other sometimes, so we're seeing. So far, so good, though. That's that. Okay. Uh, we are going to uh, head on over to some Photoshop now, I think. Oh, nice. Michael Darkwolf, you're friends with her crabbiness on Twitch? Nice. Mm -hmm. I miss her YouTubes. I think she was a real natural with it. 
<clears throat> okay, so I hold on. I'm going to. I changed my keyboard shortcut for Photoshop. Give me a second. Okay, this should be Photoshop. Let me know if you see Photoshop. And I'm going to just quickly check to make sure I haven't stopped streaming. Good, I haven't stopped streaming. Okay. Wonderful. So this is where we left off. Wonderful. Okay, thank you guys. Photoshop is on. Great. It's 836. This isn't too bad. We were working on... We were overworking on these, these rocks to the far left. Bottom. They are really well and truly labored over. And I think... I'll leave them for now. Although, I, this rock here, I'm not too crazy about. The one that's kind of below, it's just a gray shape. So why don't we get that into some form of looking better and then we'll work on the water because that is the thing that is definitely the least finished besides the fisherman himself, which will be last. Okay. Let's see, is there anything else I can talk about? Um, yeah, personal nightmare. We're we're very close to the end of the game, actually. Um, so, I need to pick something new to Let's Play. And I probably will be asking on Twitter or something about that. What people think I should try to play next. Um, I do have, I should, uh, first of all, I need to make a list of all my games and things. Um, that I have on Steam and on GOG. Ah, I see Michael Darkwolf. Um, her crabbiness was the first Let's Player that you watched. She may have been my first Let's Player as well. And yes, I'm pushing up Roses on Late Blade as well. All those people. I, I was definitely part of watching all those people and enjoying very much what they were up to. So we are going to just fiddle a little bit with this stuff and just hand to do some of these pixels. But I'm going to just, I'm going to move on because I do feel like this is a bit more than it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, I should play Swats for a night for what he says. I played Swats a little bit, uh, Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator. I played it a bit on one stream. We could definitely play it again. Um, I am not good at it. <laughs> But it is fun. The music is amazing on it. And when you press that trade button, it sounds like a video poker machine and I love it. RJ did a fantastic job on it. So. I might just do that. But I do want to play um, something older too. <laughs> Cosmic 4 3. That rock is incredible. Yeah, so that deluxe talks. Yeah, the ac ac accessibility options in SWATs were, uh, were a good addition. The ability to turn down the game speed makes the experience a lot more relaxed. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of the first things they changed um, about it is is giving people like when they first launched the game had um, two minute and thirty second trade rounds, and so now you can adjust that, which is fantastic. Absolutely. But yeah, this I might even just get rid of this rock altogether because. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the, it being not good. Yeah, accessibility options are so important, Bill Holton says, and I, and I do agree. And what, oh, something else I've been doing on the demo, uh, I mean, so on, on the beta, and new additions that you guys will probably notice in the demo but also more in the in the full game as it is i did i did add a lot more um skip cutscene things um in deference to people who might want to and i hope they do um speed run the crimson diamond eventually i would love that so i i did add uh i made a lot of stuff and um, a lot of things into cutscenes so that you can skip over them and it was actually good too it saves me time when i'm testing so it's actually it's up to my benefit as well to do that so everybody wins they have always said do they ever go back and change the op opponent purchased a microsecond before your shifts your cursor up and or down kind of thing you know Dave I think they did actually funny you should mention that I think they did do something with how that works potentially either either they fixed it or they decided they enjoyed it that way <laughs> which is entirely possible 
they might have figured it's actually that's one of those friction points that they were talking about on the game. I, I actually can't remember what they decided, but I think they might have altered that. You know, I, yeah, I definitely remember people were buying a lot of things by accident. Um, and I, yeah, I do think that they did. Yes. Oh, wow, Bilkin, I didn't know that uh, Sierra f uh, took from 1991 to 1993 for Sierra to finally put the text to dialogue on the CD-ROM games to give the player the option for both simultaneously. They didn't have that before? Yikes. Yeah, I love, I love, um, I really love just being able to have the dialogue up for as long as you want it to be up. I think, you know, I don't like feeling like I'm being, I'm being steered to like read a certain speed. And if, what if I get up and get a snack? I still want that, that dialogue to be up. So yeah, I think it's so important to have. And of course, having voice acting is also a great accessibility issue, uh, um, feature. But yeah, it does cost a pretty penny. And I'm kind of wondering if the default uh, text boxes in the Crimson Diamond, if I should uh, give an option where you can reverse and have uh, it be black text on a white background, because I know for some people reading lighter colored text on a dark background is kind of tricky. Um, that's something I've been considering. Oh, a fan patch for, for Space Quest 4. Nice. Added both. Uh, Mystery Capybara also says there are a lot of games from that era that didn't have a subtitles option in the CD version. That yeah, that's really a, just a pity. And the snacking is very important, Blaholtz. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, I have my snack here, my healthy snack of, of pears and apples. I'll be digging into that later. Uh, interesting. Dave Boy says, Dialogue Autoscope was like the number one complaint from watching LPs of the Jam. Yeah, I, I really don't like that as, as a thing. Text-to-speech is especially fitting in retro games. Wouldn't that be funny if I had that? Yeah, Deluxe Talks, I have subtitles, subtitles on on games pretty much all the time. I like even subtitles when I'm watching television shows. Because if you're eating lunch or something or watching something, you know, you can't really sometimes hear it that well. So yeah, I will put that on all the time. Oh nice, you got a group LP of your game day of war. They actually had done dice rolling uh, uh, tabletop role playing games and were immediately delighted by the dice rolling. Who doesn't like rolling dice? I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, Bill, can you like the idea of black text on white background for TCD? Yeah, I might get, give that as an option. Oh wow, this is a Chrome extension that adds subtitles to Netflix. Nice. My Netflix subtitles look terrible. They're very hard to read, and I did try to change it, because you can change it in the browser, but it didn't stick for some reason, and that's kind of frustrating. Oh yeah, and yeah, for so you, you can learn lots of extra things on <laughs> if you keep those t subtitles on. Absolutely. Ooh, Shindig 2021. Is that a game that Lux Tux step further and makes the subtitles an engaging game element? Yeah, finding proper color contrast more and more important, Edenworth. Edenworth, do you have trouble with the um, the way that there's the dark gray um, background with the white text in Crimson Diamond? Because I, I definitely was thinking of giving the option um, of a different color dialogue box. These corn dogs make you hungry, <laughs> Cosmic Point. <laughs> oh, okay, anyways, you got in too late for the dev, dev updates. Okay, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I mean... I'm still going through um, feedback. 
game feedback. Uh, so that's what I'm up to now, and I'm adding a lot of stuff because people have a lot of really good ideas. And so whenever you guys have ideas, I definitely will consider them. Uh, see, Mr. Capybara, if you're streaming, you always turn the subtitles on in case you accidentally talk over the dialogue. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, so what, what I have right now is as I'm running my Twitch stream, I've got a captioner running as well in my Chrome. And I think that's supposed to help with the with better captions, I think. On Twitch, the captions are supposed to show, potentially. Okay, so Shindig is a cute little point and click about talking animals to throw a party. Ah, very children's cartoon sort of vibe. By former Nintendo devs. Oh, very nice. Who got married and quit. Um, there's a game that I did, um... My sister had a game called Penguin Ultimatum that was about penguins, penguins throwing a party. And, um... I kind of redid the cards and everything for her one year as a gift. Yeah, yeah, so Maple Miss, oh, Maple, sorry. Bokun says options for different colored detection boxes, not just for style. I think many people would like the option for some vision reading problems or something. Yeah, so I will, I'll look into doing um, another set of, of text boxes that are white background with black text. Because that would probably be the optimal type of reading. So that's good. I'm gonna, yeah, the next thing we mentioned before on these art streams that the water is what's looking the least done right now. So we're gonna go in on onto that. And of course the fisherman who, uh, the fisherman who is on a separate layer and is, will be animated as well. The water will be animated too, eventually, but the fisherman will be last. So we'll start in on the water. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking. I am looking at this jetty because the, this jetty shot is in the game right now, and it's nice and really super helpful to be able to look at stuff that's already in the game as a visual reference to how I kind of do stuff. And looking at this, I kind of think this needs more happy little evergreen trees. There's only two of them. They look. There needs to be at least three of something. I feel like. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna do that first. <laughs> oh, Cosmic 43 called it a pier. Uh, yeah, it's like it just, it's actually, it's hard to tell the scale because you don't see any actual human characters on this. But, um, yeah, it's like a, it's supposed to be pretty small. But I couldn't really tell you the, um, what the distinction would be. Penguin Ultimatum sounds where Linux destroys Microsoft. It's a very, it's a weird name for a game about par penguins throwing a party. They could have just gone with party penguins or something. Well, yeah, let's put in another one of those trees. I feel like... Yeah, and I actually want some more. I want... I'm going to do another closer, relatively close evergreen tree, and then I'm going to do a few in the distance to give them that depth as well. But I'm thinking I will put one here. And I will do the skeleton of, of it first. Uh, Eden Wade said, I could barely understand anything being said in the first scene of Monty Python and the Holy Grail when I first watched. It wasn't until years later when I watched the DVD with subtitles, which I could catch the more subtle lines. That's another very good point. So if you're watching a, a show that has people with an accent that you're not used to, then uh, subtitles can be extremely helpful. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, it's a pier, S.H. Don says. It's got... It is on poles and pillars. Jetties impede the flow of water to protect the shores from the tides and the current. There we go. Someone someone in chat comes through. So this is definitely a pier. I am sorry, Cosmic 43, it's my mistake. Not a jetty whatsoever. The room is called jetty in the game. And good to see you, SH Don. SH Don is another fellow um, Adventure Game Studio game game person and game jammer. So it's always good to see him. Yes. Sometimes you just never know. And I'm always happy to learn. 
And of course, I guess I should also, speaking of, somewhat related note, yeah, if you guys play the demo and there's something, you know, you see a bug or there's something you feel like I could fix or, or improve upon, you can email julia at thecrimsondiamond.com and uh, I will definitely take it into consideration. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just Don Peer reviewed the Jetty for us. Jim Makes Games asks, is it possible to take a long walk, walk off the short pier? Funny you should, you should say that, because it is indeed possible. Which, which leads us to the whole autosave versus no autosave debate, which I just, I don't even need to really say, because if I give people the option to autosave, then it means that they can just play how they please. Yes, Mr. Cavalry says the DVD for the movie Snatch has a subtitle option just for Brad Pitt's character due to his thick accent. Yes, I've heard I've heard that the accent is nigh unintelligible in, in Snatch. Autosave on Cosmic 43? Um, do I know what size Twitch emotes are? Davor asks. Um I haven't made one in such a long time I couldn't I can't remember. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, it's, it's been a really long time since I have. Ah, Bilkin does not like autosave, so this is the thing, there's going to be people in, in, you know, both, both, with both opinions, so it's just better to give people their, their own choice and they can decide. Ah, Michael Darkwolf says, all I got to say is save early, save often, quote, out low. A uh, 28 pixel square Jim makes game says 28 pixel square for a Twitch emote. Um, so yeah, that's what color. You know what? I feel like the dark blue will be um, the color of the evergreen trees in the distance. So why don't we poke a few of those in here? Yeah, Mystery, Ca Mystery Capybara says Twitch emotes appear in three sizes, 28 pixel squares, 56 and 112 pixel square. Oh, wow. You can just upload emotes in 2K and have auto Twitch auto resize them now? See, it's been, it's been just that long for me. I have no idea how these things work. Not that I ever really knew. So it's good to know. Oh, video 1990X. Thanks for the subscription. Fantastic. Okay, so anything square at 112 by 112 or larger will do, and then Twitch will downscale it for you, which is kind of nice. I appreciate that. Oh, and I forgot to shout out Tonda Gasa. And I was just scrambling. Tonda is an amazing streamer. Does retro streams and also is an artist. These might need another color to make them stand out. I think they might need maybe a touch of the black, potentially. It might be too much. It's okay if they don't stand out. Um, Bill couldn't. I know. I think they completely they they down downsize pull them properly. I would imagine. Although I haven't done it that way. I, fig I figure they would. Because that's something I probably would notice on if they were to do that. I haven't done new emotes in a long time because I won't need to. In a I think I I'm far away from actually needing them. Oh, cool. So Jimmy seems to that those emotes that were just 
you just put in upload it the correct size and they're nice and crisp I, I do appreciate that I am trying to put a bit of this black in here although I don't know why It's just a suggestion of some shadow, maybe. Or I don't know if that works or not, but at that at that depth, it's not too big of a deal one way or the other. Yeah, hiding deep in the woods is a Sasquatch. I put a Sasquatch back there. Yeah, it doesn't, at this size, and all the dithering that's happening, you don't have to do very much in here to get anything to look like anything. Dragon Trash, welcome to chat. Good to see you. Happy New Year's. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm feeling better. I think I actually want... Yeah, I'm gonna put another one here. I told- I said I'd do the water, but I just keep on making excuses not to. Ah, Mouse is asking, by the way, anyone hyped for Death on the Nile, the upcoming Agatha Christie movie? I know I am. I just, I love the fact that there's this, this, this revival of, of, um, Agatha Christie style mysteries, of course. Um, so there was Murder on the Orient Express with Kenneth Branagh's Poirot, and he's Poirot again for Murder on the Nile. I feel like, um, Knives Out is kind of also in that same kind of tradition, where it's kind of like a modern modern spin on an Agatha Christie no um, novel. So of course I love this trend. Wouldn't it be wonderful if there was, you know, a Nancy Maple. Oh, you know what? It's kind of nice. I think black dithering would be nice on those trees. I'm too lazy though to add a, another mask, so I'm just gonna put some in by hand. And then the brain will make it look like it's trees. The rock on the bottom of the screen lives on. And yes, there's also gonna be Mystery Cabaret where it says, yes, there's gonna be a Knives Out sequel, and I'm very excited about that as well. That movie was a lot of fun. If anyone has not seen Knives Out. I heartily recommend it. It's got one of um, one of Christopher Plummer's last performances. Christopher Plummer is an inc incredible Canadian actor. Really, 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 really wonderful. Fun. So much fun. The cast it seems like they're having a ball. Everyone is great. Tony Collette, Michael Shannon, Daniel Craig, um, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Don Johnson. It's so much fun. It is so much fun. Yes, Mystery Capybara. Yeah, Knives Out play, uh, plays amazingly with tropes we love from Agatha Christie. Oh, Dave Voice is Murder by Death. I have not seen Murder by Death. Oh, it's. Edenworth recently watched the 1956 movie We're No Angels, which had Humphrey Bogart and Peter Ustinov, who played Poirot in a few movies. Of the whole time you feel weird about watching movies by yourself? I, I, well, now that we've got all the streaming stuff, it's just it's pretty, it's pretty fun. Just, you know, you know, if you feel weird about watching something by yourself, you can always just have it on in the background, something, you know, just to have on. Oh uh, yes, the same. Yeah, um, Ryan Johnson, Matt, Mr. Capybara. You're right. I um, did the high school noir movie called Brick, and I also really like movie as well. Jordan Go Jordan Gorsav jo 
Jor Jordan Joseph Levitt is what I want to say. Gordon <sighs> Joseph Joseph Gordon Levitt is in Brick, and he's really good, and that's a really fun movie. Yeah, as I said, almost a year since Plummer died. He lived to a ripe old age. Of course, he's in The Sound of Music, which is a fantastic movie, of course. We're going to talk movies. Yes, even with Plummer was Canadian. Wonderfully Canadian. Just, he's so good in that movie, in Knives Out. Of course, in, 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 in Sound of Music as well. And we have Farewell to Nova Scotia playing right now. Speaking of, yeah, Canada, as we always are. Yeah, uh, Jess and Jeff, yeah, Benoit Blanc from Knives Out is going to be part of at least one other movie, because, yeah, they did do a, they are doing a sequel. Oh, I would love Murder by Death? Okay, Devor, gotcha. You only get to enjoy a movie for the first time once. That is very true. But I'm going to write down Murder by Death. Murder by Death. Very good. Yes, any mystery lovers? Definitely Knives Out. If you also like mystery shows, there's a show called Shetland on Netflix. They don't have all the seasons, but they have a good amount of it. Um, that's a lot of fun. It's very... Um, kind of procedural in the way that it goes by. Th not procedural like um, any of those like Law and Order or anything like that, but it's very mystery, twists and turns, really good writing, a lot of actors you'll recognize from a bunch of different places. So I recommend if you like mysteries and mystery TV shows, Shetland is really fun. And they have really beautiful scenery in that show. Oh, Netflix has signed off on a third Benoit Blanc. Shatika, good to see you, fellow Canadian. Wonderful. Good to see you. <laughs> Christopher Plummer, I thought of Christopher Hewitt, Mr. Belvedere. Okay. He played a live action King Koopa in Ice Capades in 1989. That's a fun thing to have on a resume. Yeah, I think I'm liking having the. Just the weirdly drawn in evergreens. I think it's adding a little something. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That really helps. Yeah. This is another show that is... So Shetland is based on a, a series of books and a character written by a mystery novelist Anne Cleves. So that's, I think, one of the reasons why the episodes are really strong. So they're really, like, they tend to be longer episodes, I think, too. Um, so they're all pretty much self-contained. The first couple seasons on Netflix are pretty much self-contained. Every two episodes is its own little, almost like a mini-movie. But so there's another show that Anne Cleves, um, that is based on characters written and books written by Anne Cleves, which is called Vera. And Vera is um, set in North Northern, London, North Northern England. And that one's a lot of fun, and actually a lot of the same actors you see in both of those shows. It's always fun to see um, Game of Thrones actors on these types of, sh types of shows as well. Oops. Mystery shows are a lot of fun. And I'm so glad mystery movies are coming back. I feel it's one of those like mid-budget type of things that are super enjoyable because people want to see really good stories and really good characters and good writing. And I think mysteries can be a great showcase for that. Hello, I'm a little teapot. Yes, frolicking me, frolicking me, frolicking among the bulrushes. I am indeed. Yeah, the brain is funny. The looks like this is the fun thing about about doing art like this. I'm using blue, and you're saying it reads as green. Yeah, brains are great at relative color. I love it. It's the magic of pixel art. It's the magic of all kinds of art. And that's why I was mentioning that for the cross-stitching, I need enable to adequately test out the cross-stitching colors I've selected for my EGA palette. I need to try a few of the different portraits to see how the colors sit next to each other. Because it's not just a matter of absolute color, it's definitely about relative color and how they relate to one another. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, that, 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 the, the dress meme, the blue, black versus white and gold thing. <laughs> That's a whole thing. It's funny because anyone can get fooled by what color actually is in front of them versus what their brain thinks they see. You'll find that kind of a lot with like shadows, when people paint shadows. They don't realize how blue and purple shadows can be. They kind of, people think shadows are black and then they aren't. It's really cool. That's one of the great pleasures of going to an art gallery and seeing the art on display. It's just getting in there and seeing, you know, instead of just seeing the illusion of what is created when the artist puts colors next to each other and blends colors, you can actually get up there and see exactly what they did to achieve the effect. And sometimes it's a surprise, a pleasant surprise. Yeah, see, Mystery Capybara, that's exactly my point. Mysteries might be the genre to bring back mid-budget feature films. So they probably translate well as international box office performance is increasingly important. Yeah, I, I really hope that there's this, there can be a shift towards some mid-budget stuff and having fantastic performances by fantastic actors. Yeah, and that, that um, blue, black, white, gold, the trick with that was the cropping and you didn't get to see the context that it was in. I think that was the reason people were getting different opinions about what color it was. Because yeah, and it, what the context of what something's in make, totally makes a difference. And it's really fun to be able to break that stuff down visually when you see it. Yes, and eat it with your right. Old Sierra games were clever in making the area look shadow, shadowy without using black. Absolutely. And it's really cool because I think I've showed examples of using the use of, of EGA and how they did the shadows and they don't have to necessarily go with the most obvious um, dark versus light color on that. And, and if you don't, you get some really interesting lighting effects. Like you'd see in, in Space Quest, um, there'd be like a light that was purple and the shadow for that was was blue and it kind of gives you this kind of cosmic looking look which is kind of amazing versus something like natural sunlight yes i'm a little teapot that is what i love about ega you've replayed a lot of ega games recently and it's funny how the color schemes aren't realistic but work that's the thing i love the most And eating with yeah, there's a limited amount of CG. Well, there is CG in, in, in those movies, but it's just not the kind that you expect or people tend to think of when they think of CG. Like they think of big spaceships and battles and you know all that type of a thing. But there's really subtle ways that CG, CG gets used um, that you might not people don't really think twice about, but is super compelling as well. That isn't really flashy and not explosions. Jim makes games wonderful to see you again get some sleep get a good night's rest have a lovely time yeah even naturalistic movies use especially use have heavy color grading and even shows that you know you think of something like we had a guest on the show jim maxwell who um, works on vikings and won an uh won an emmy for his work on vikings there's so much cg in that but it's not stuff that's particularly flashy it's it's to make you know, certain places look more Norwegian and, and take away like telephone poles out of scenes and everything. So this is a huge demand for that type of a thing. But when you look at it, you don't, your brain does not say, oh, this is obviously CG. But there is a lot that goes into those shots that you might not think about. <laughs> and yes, for there are there is CG to make actors look more attractive. That definitely does happen too. Yes, good CG is invisible. Yeah. So it's really cool to see like CG breakdowns um, of shots where, you, you know, there's a fleet of ships, but when you actually break it down, there's maybe one or two ships and then, then the artist has gone in and filled in the rest. 
Yeah, on corridor crew, they would say good CG is invisible. Yeah. You know, stuff like extreme close-up shots as well. I mean, just shots that would be hard to achieve with the camera physically. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that can go on. And it's wonderful that it doesn't have to be that flashy. Because my mom is one of those people who says she doesn't like flashy CG. She doesn't like, you know, superhero movies and things like that. But, you know, in, in a mystery show where they've got some sort of, you know, car that drives in, into a ditch or something and you don't need to do that, you could just make that happen in CG. You know, it says smart use of effects. Instead of a map painting in the background, they can fill it in later. Well, they do both actually. They'll 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 um, extend a shot with with a map painting. Even they'll even still do that now. But now they can even they can add moving elements and stuff, and, and you know, all shadows and smoke and everything, and three D elements. So that it's kind of even harder to see that it's a map painting necessarily. Yeah, CG is increasingly used in gunfire, usually as a safety measure, sometimes stylistically as well. Very true. Ah, um, Beautiful Mind, which Plummer was in, had credits for visual effects. Yeah, and yeah, there's shows that you wouldn't think, there's movies you think there wouldn't, and Jim Matt says map paintings are cool. Just a Jeffy works in VFX. From my perspective, good CG is stuff that is cheap to make, renders quickly, and pays well. <laughs> uh, from an artist's perspective, indeed. But yeah, yeah, matte painting does still happen. It just, it's just digital now. For the most part, it's digital. <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't know you worked in VFX, just a Jeffy. Would you be able to say anything that you've worked on, or is that not a thing you can do? Oh, not an artist? So what do, what do you do uh, in VFX? IT pipeline, etc. Interesting. All that stuff is super, 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 super necessary. It's definitely a team effort. And having an artist's eye is not necessary to be a really important part of a team. Ah, oh, you've worked on stuff we've, we've probably seen. If you can't say, you can't say, but of course if you can, we would love to know. Ah, oh, interesting. In a beautiful mind, they added CG birds so they wouldn't fly away with the little goldfish running around the park. Subtle effects. Yeah, stuff like that. Love, love stuff like that. Yeah, I think these trees are really helping. Yeah. Then I think of stuff like um, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and I think I think that those are real birds. At least in some shots. Ah. Oh, you did. Oh, everything from Thomas the Tank Engine to the Watchmen and lots in between. Now, Jester Jeffy, do you mean Watchmen the movie or the Watchmen the TV show? Oh, and Mousemus thinks the cat in the new Matrix movie is CG, but not 100% certain. Just felt off. Ah, the movie. I did like that movie quite a bit. Just a Jeffy. Good work on working on it. Do you get to have your name in the credits and stuff? Yeah, Mr. Capybara. I'm pretty sure they were real birds in The Last Crusade. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to train cats to do stuff, so I can totally believe they would use a CG cat. Oh, they couldn't get the birds to stay on the beach in Last Crusade, so they made a bunch of fake ones. <laughs> Oh wow, then a bunch of seagulls flocked toward the fake birds and they caught them on film. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, I love stuff like that. I love learning about what what goes into all that stuff. 
And when Christopher Plummer was mentioned, th a beautiful mind, CG was subtle, perhaps like adding leaves to trees, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, just a Jeffy, can just, I, I hope you have, um, you know, fun and I'm proud of producing and being part of a team like that. One way or the other. <laughs> Flukas, good to see you. Howdy. Happy New Year, Flukas. It's been since last year. My gosh, it's... And then it won't be long before people are saying, Oh my gosh, it's only January. Like, it's almost half... January's almost halfway through, you guys. I can't, I can't say I, I like that. That it is almost done. I, I, uh... Yes, last video. Why must you remind me of the speed of time? It's nipping at my heels constantly. Um, it's relentless. Oh no! <laughs> Just Jeffy says, sure. I love working in VFX animation, but it's been a couple of decades now and the novelty has worn off, so. Oh, that's true, Bill Coon. Good point. Not much not much longer to go for winter. Although we just had a kind of one of our first big cold snaps here in Toronto. Oh, your dad had a fake Huron in his fish pond. And one morning I noticed there was another one next to it. it turned out to be real. I think I was disappointed to find out the other hero was made of plastic. <laughs> That's really cute, Bo Holton. Huh. Oh, I'm a little teapot. Looked at my government health card, health plan card today and realized it's been expired for six months. But luckily there's a grace period because of corona craziness. Um, in, at least in Ontario, there ha there is a grace period. And my... Mine was almost expired for a year, and they sent out letters to everyone saying, don't worry about it. Like, both your license and your health card, although you still have to renew your plates every year. Yeah, Toronto was very cold today. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, even though I did end up renewing um, my, my health card and my license. But you don't have to, because they're saying, just don't worry about it, we'll get you later. And I've gone to appointments and stuff, it's been fine. Although, you know, they'll say, you know, oh, your health card is expired, but they'll still do whatever, so it's fine. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Cosmo 8 degrees Celsius. They're cold for you, but probably sounds like a warm summer evening to you. 8 degrees, yeah, I'd go jogging at 8 degrees outside. For sure. Ooh, cold in the USA, minus 28. Yeah, Flukas. Yeah, it's it's only a real it's only cold snap here in Toronto. It's going to be warmer tomorrow, so it's overall it overall not too bad of a winter. Ah, two degrees Celsius in southern Sweden sounds fantastic. Eight is too cold. Oh cool, you so you learn how to use an oscilloscope, Bill Coon. It may aid in fixing vintage computers. You remember your dad once teaching at you on the kitchen table, but you had to really learn it all. Thank goodness thank really honestly thank goodness for YouTube because I would have been stuck forever on um, personal nightmare if I hadn't been for YouTube. Shift Um hold on, I'm just gonna go to Big Julia for a second because Oh wait, what happened? I think I'm frozen. What's going on? Okay. I just had to check that. Dr. CDCS, thank you for the follow. Fantastic. <laughs> for it doesn't get out of bed if it's, if it's that cold outside. Eight. Oh, I'm a little teapot. I also lives in southern Ontario. Feels like the season has been moving later. Fall lasts until Christmas, but then the winter lasts until April or May. Oh my goodness, I hope not. Blaholton thinks everything under freezing, above freezing and under 16 is a reasonable temperature, so not too hot. Could ask for a Manhunter tips? 
Oh, you have you been playing Manhunter, Doctor CDCS? I Manhunter is a series that I kind of am fascinated by because it is it is EGA, and it's like it's that SCI EGA, and it's fantastical. I mean EGA, and it's fantastic looking. It's really gorgeous. Um, I'm gonna go back to Photoshop. Control this. You finished both. Oh my gosh, did you stream it? I'm gonna shout you out. Um. And how were those for you, by the way? I've seen other Let's Plays of them, and they look... They look kind of difficult. Although... CDCS. Amazing game, unique, just like Colonel's Book Quest. Yes, they do look amazing. They really do. Um, and I've heard that... Well, Retrograde Tom has played them, I think. And he's also played Codename Iceman. And he said Personal Nightmare is the only one he's gotten stuck on, which kind of terrifies me. Oh, Cosmic Void 3, um, you're going to do um, a Manhunter sort of game. Same palette, same artistic takes, same resolution. We'll get to it eventually later in 2022. I would love to do something kind of that looks like Manhunter and Manhunter 2. I would love that. I want to do that. I think these, yeah, the trees are good. I'm going to leave that for now. I think that really helps to ground things, though. Yeah, the, the arcade sequences, are they look very not fun. Oh, Deluxe talks heavily back into chess YouTube. Oh, Flukish, your comfort zone is temperatures between 15 degrees Celsius and 24 degrees Celsius. That's your range? Okay, my range is... Yeah, between like 15 and 25, maybe, I think is fine. But, you know, of course, Canada goes from minus 30 to plus 30. It's way too much for me. And only gets hotter every year, it seems. Oh, I'm a little teapot. Played Manhunter, Manhunter 2, but never live. <laughs> yeah, Retrograde Tom plays an amazing amount of things, and is super patient and good at, at, at games. <laughs> yeah, he streams for like nine hours at a time, and I just, I'm fascinated by that. Whoa. It took 100 plus deaths, Dr. CDCS says. Manhunter took 100 plus deaths, but, it, but it's beatable. I'm frightened. <laughs> Faroy loves reading chess books and doing chess puzzles, but hates playing it. I've never been much of a chess person. I, I just never like really buckled down and learned it, all that stuff. Looks like a lot of memorization. It's a quite good series of game. You wish they made three. 20 degrees Celsius is max for your comfort, Blaholson. That's too hot. Eh. Depends if it's humidity. Does it get humid in Sweden? Yeah, I've got a pretty narrow range that I'm comfortable at, which is a shame because because Canada is a country with the, one of the broadest spectrums of, of temperatures. Oh no, Blaholton! Unfortunately, my apartment likes to hang out around thirty and forty degrees in the summer. Oh my goodness! I remember in the summer in elementary school, we'd have we'd be in portables. And they were basically like ovens. They they just were metal boxes that we baked in. That wasn't fun. Okay, I'm I I now I promise I'm gonna go and actually address the water. Let's do the water. Yes, Toronto <laughs> Toronto was minus twenty five last night. It was not nice. Okay, Slash Studio says chess is memorization, memor memorization about openings. I like to study end game strategy and mid game tactics. Hmm. <laughs> Just a Jeffy, that's a good coping strategy. Like to check the temperature in Yellowknife makes you feel better about the temperature in Toronto. That's like a Canadian tradition. It's just, okay, well, at least I'm not in Winnipeg right now and it's not minus 40. Yeah, lots of lots of Canadians. I, I really enjoy that. <laughs> I 
Oh, uh, you know, and Deluxe Tux doesn't have the energy to study opening, but just did have a nice Evans Gambit game a few minutes ago in another tab. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. You're in the attic floor of an old 1800s art Jugendstil building. That sounds beautiful, but not well ventilated. Alf Lucas's grandfather was Canadian. Nice. <laughs> So that, yeah, let's get into that water. So the water, um, I've, what I've done on the the pier, as we now will correctly call it, uh, the, the shadow is created by the darker blue. So this will be predominantly the lighter blue. I think is what we're going for here. Keeping in mind, let's pop the fisherman back on because we, want to, we do want to keep in mind um, paying attention to where he is making him the focal point. Currently minus 34 Celsius in Yellowknife, just as Jeffrey says. Fantastic! I feel warmer already. <laughs> Fornado! Hey, uh, good to see you. Welcome to chat. We're just doing some pixel art right now. Oh, Flukas did spend a lot of time in Southern Ontario as a kid. Ooh, you're- you, ooh, I love- I love towers. You're in a- half your apartment in a corner tower, Blahotsen? I want to live in a tower. Ooh, Lake Superior Provincial Park is gorgeous. I don't know if I've even been there. Oh, wow. That's true about Canadians. Both people helping Slash deal with his game are Canadian too, and they're everywhere. Yeah, we're everywhere. Good old Canadians. Do you want to do like a, like a thing in chat where if you're Canadian, put a... I don't know. What do you want to do? If you're if you're Canadian, put A in chat. E H. There we go. Canadians say A in chat. <laughs> so let's see here. We're gonna do a thing where the water gets Quebec, but still Canadian, Quebecois, Proto Mill. Tika, Canadian. <laughs> yes, I heard it. I have F's in chat, but A's. A, yes. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is sample all layers. It's Let's grab just the blue. Hide the selection, but it's still up, so I can kind of paint and not worry about going over things. Yes, A, A's in chat. A in chat if you're Canadian. Why is this... Okay. And I will be um, animating this river with the same... Probably also, again, with um, three frames of animation. Which people say I should animate more frames, and I may eventually. I may not. Hey, so dark CDCS. <laughs> I love all Canadians. Ooh, 1905, La Holton. That sounds gorgeous. Oh, cool. Okay, so yeah, you, Valhalla has dropped what Jugendstil looks like. 
So Jigen still is kind of... Is it like Art Nouveau-like? Vaholtzen? I can't remember. It's either Art Nouveau or Art Deco-like, which would be amazing to live in. Yes, Canada, Protomel country. Quebec is part of it. Yep. In fact, Margot in the in the Crimson Diamond is French Canadian. Um, quite Quebecois. Jugendstil, yes, is like Art Nouveau. Yes, okay, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, some version of Blaholtzen, yeah, some version of Art Nouveau, yes. It might be just a regional type of Art Nouveau. I can't remember. But yeah, Art Nouveau is one of my big uh, loves and inspirations. And I think that started when I was into The Wizard of Oz when I was a kid. I think I talked. I think I talked about this before. Um, one of the artists, R. Neil, on Oz would kind of do Art Nouveau style. So that would be Ozma with her like poppy buns, her poppy flower buns on her side of her head, kind of like Princess Leia buns. The Emerald City was kind of like Art Art Deco looking, Art Nouveau looking. But I, I was big into fairy princesses when I was a kid. Yes, Portimo. Proud Quebecois nonetheless. Canada is all about multiplicity and EGA worship. Exactly. We can all agree on EGA worship. Oh, yes, Lucas. I live, I live, you live in a house built in 1905. Victorian woodwork, beautiful knob and tube wiring, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff is the scary stuff. And insulating. <laughs> But beautiful. They don't make them like they used to, you know. Okay, my mystery capybara says growing up, my understanding was Jugendstil. Jugendstil was German Australian Austrian form of Far Nouveau. Yeah, I believe it. I do. I just it's been a while since I've dug into my Art Nouveau books. Ah, and Blaholtzen, you said your art history teacher insisted architecture style in Sweden was specifically Jugendstil. There's an EGA worship. Yes, there's an EGA. Thank you, Slash Studio. I actually really like that one. There's an EGA worship in, in codename Iceman. Hmm. So I think I'll see. Oh, Flukas, you lived there for 20 years. Wow. Yes, word of the day, you can steal. Yeah. Art Nouveau is kind of like fairy princess, ultimate fairy princess. The furniture is very princessy too. It's very impractical, um, but it's gorgeous. And not, not something that can be mass produced. So it's not something I'd ever really have, but I appreciate the whiptail forms and you'll, you know, I mean, I think we've talked about the Art Nouveau posters in, in the Crimson Lodge, in the Crimson Diamond. Um, so yeah, the Wizard of Oz would bring us Ozma with her hair buns and her um, giant poppies on the sides of her head. Which brought me to uh, Alphonse Mucha. Mucha is a big, big, big Art Nouveau artist. And I, I definitely saw a lot of, um, a lot of Art Nouveau, uh, a lot of princessy, pretty, pretty princessy stuff in Mucha's work. I, is that a real thing? I'm a little teapot. Originally, there was going to be another Allo sex comedy codename Ass Man. 
Yeah, it's such a I liked your dad joke. That was the best one I've ever heard. Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm glad you like the water. I, I think the water looks... It, it's a bit messy right now. I, I don't like when um, everything's not completely pixely perfect when it comes to water, but it'll it's gonna... We'll get there. Maybe you can still is less ornate. Aside from being regional. It would be funny if it were true. Yeah, the, the water, I will... I will be, um, bu -bu -bu. I will be animating the water, and it's going to be annoying to do, but um, it'll only be three or four frames, so I can deal with it. But we need to make the water kind of around him, we kind of need to make it kind of flowing around him more so I might just work on that a little bit that would help us also to emphasize him too now maybe I just like it it was fine the way it was wasn't it Yes, animation will solve this. And there, yeah, there will be animation on this. Um, but it just, it's kind of a little tedious to get in here and just make all this perfect. Yes, and, then, and the fisherman does animate a tad in the shot. Yeah, so what happens is... Um, the fish is down initially and he gets tugging on the line and he reels it up and, uh, and there's the fish. So it's a little bit more of a complicated um, animation than the fish getting one we did. But yeah, that'll be a while yet. But yes, I am I'm, I'm wondering what I will try playing after after um, Personal Nightmare. And I would like it to be something, hopefully, like EGA palette or text parser and or text parser, you know. Um, or, you know, maybe, maybe some more Space Warlord, Organ Trading Simulator, something. But it's kind of fun to play the old stuff, too. Something that has a nice walkthrough, yes. Uh, what I probably will do um, is try to play it without, you know, without a walkthrough for a few rounds. A week or two, that way, and then just go down, you know, get down to business and <laughs> try to finish the thing. Because I guarantee I won't be able to finish most things. You're voting for Manhunter Mouses? Oh no. Oh no. I don't even know if I own those. Not that I'm sure that I could, they're easy to come by. I might just recommend Yahtzee Croshaw's and Gabriel Morton's Let's Plays of Manhunter 1 and 2. Because they, they, they played them all the way through and were highly amusing when they were doing it. So that could be a thing instead. I don't I don't know if I'm equipped to, to play those. Arcade sequences... Uh... Yeah, Yahtzee had a... Ha well, it's still out, out on YouTube. If you just look up Yahtzee... I don't know, and a number. Um, he, has, he did a ton of Let's Plays. Um, he even did some Sierra games. Back when when he was in Australia, and they're they're a lot of fun. I used to watch them a lot. Yes, Yahtzee nineteen would be it. Yes, 
I'm a little teapot. Nothing says fast moving action sequence like see sequences like a game written an adventure game interpreter. Yeah, it's just it's you know, I applaud the effort, honestly. I like when people try try things that are, you know, try to use things for things that it's not made for. But yeah, I, I think Gachi19, that's a great it's a great channel. Everything is organized in playlists. He played um Fantasy World Dizzy was the very first one, and that might be one of my favorites if you want to try anywhere. You might as well start from the very beginning. That one's a lot of fun. Because apparently he played it a lot when he was in his younger days, so he's very knowledgeable about it. They also play Alex Kidd in Miracle World. They play something called Young Merlin. They play um, they play Beneath the Still Sky. And they play a bunch of stuff. Yes, I'm a little teapot. Yahtzee also made some early AGS games. Absolutely. He made the Chizo Mythos, which I think are fantastic. Uh, I like them a lot, and I've played them all. Of course, I like Trilby's Notes the most. And that's why Yatsi Krosha, I made a tribute to Yatsi Krosha, just like I made a tribute to her crabbiness in The Crimson Diamond, in the character of Corvus Shaw. And that's because he was an AGSer, and he made his own games. Um, and he was another big inspiration, along with uh, Francisco. Yes, Yahtzee also has written books and released a horror game, The Consuming Shadow, which is absolutely worth playing. Protomill is absolutely correct. Um, I actually... Um, I have The Consuming Shadow and I really enjoyed playing it. And I made EGAD makes of some of the screenshots. I haven't read any of his books, though I think I have a PDF of Jam that I got from some packet or other that he might have been selling at one point. But I've never, I've never read any of his books. Yes, but Halton, it's the same Yahtzee that does zero punctuation now. Yeah, and he still does like solo game dev stuff. Although I think for his latest game project, he will be hiring a uh, pixel artist. He mentioned in on one of his escapist pieces that he's thinking about hiring a pixel artist for his latest project, Starstruck Vagabond. Um, but I kind of was thinking, oh my gosh, I want to like submit to that and say oh i would love to do work for your piece but i th i think i'm too busy and i think i need to finish my own game before i work on anybody else's game jam is a good read protomo says yeah yeah i say it's on your reading mog world i yeah, i might be interested in mog world because i did play my fair share of um world of warcraft and i know that's what he's referencing a lot of when he when he wrote that so that would be one I would be interested in reading, just for that reason alone. Yes, video posted nine years ago. Yeah, that, that's an old channel, and he doesn't do anything with it. Um, but I do like the fact that it doesn't serve any ads, which is kind of nice. And he never monetized it. But it's fun, and him and Gabriel have a really fun rapport between the two of them. So I, 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 do, I will rewatch those on occasion. Yeah, Blah Holton, not taking on too many projects can be a real challenge sometimes. Yeah, I've. I, that's one of my problems. Because <laughs> I just think, oh my gosh, I really want to do that. That sounds really cool. And it usually is really cool. And then my game gets delayed more. But I can't. I just can't help myself. Because you never know when, you know, another opportunity is going to come around. Hey, Adam Gray26. Oh, oh, thanks. Good to see. He says uh, Adam Gray says good to see you for Crimson Cat Tuesday after a long time. We've missed a heap of them due to work. Well, the last couple weeks we haven't done any for the the holidays, so you you might not have missed as many as you think. And I do um, I do post them on YouTube, although I know it's not the same to watch them that way, but I do put them on there as well. But I do, I like, um, yeah, I like adding, like, things about just other people in adventure games that I really think were awesome. So there is, like, a little Francisco 
and uh, Ben Chandler Easter egg as well. But they, they, it's if you read the newspaper that you start with. I, I shout out a, some old Let's Players and, and game developers that um, I was really appreciating back when I, when I made the Easter egg. So you've got like um, Francisco, Francisco and uh, Ben Chandler did the Blue Cup Tools podcast. And so I kind of called them Frank, uh, fr I called them Frank and Ben, Frank and Francisco and B, Frank and Ben's Frank and Beans or something. I can't remember what I put. Also Sk Skippy Granola is in that same newspaper because it's Skippy Granola we did used to do a lot of YouTube and, and Twitch. And of course, it was so wonderful to see her crabbiness pop by, because yeah, I'm, I was a big fan of hers. She also played Hato Full Boyfriend on her on her channel. Well, that was one of her more recent ones, and I I thought that was fun too. That game is bizarre, but she did such a good job. Let's playing it. I don't know some people just kind of have a knack to do that type of thing. I don't think I'm a particularly natural Let's player, but it is fun to do, and people seem to enjoy it. So. I like doing it, and it lets me see games that I might not necessarily do otherwise. Yeah, and I'm a little teapot. It is cool to see people, you know, make careers in the game industry. Absolutely. Okay, I mean, I've been watching Zero Punctuation for years and years and years. Oh, no, it's Michael Dykwolf. met Francisco in person. It was great. Uh, and we met him in New York. Yeah, I met Francisco at Adventure X in London in 2019. I also met him at PAX West, I think that same year, in the 4-4 times. It was really, yeah, it was really fun. Dr. CDCS, you th say it's a tasty looking fish. You must be pretty hungry. Enjoy your whatever you eat. Oh, uh, you say have a great stream and can't wait to play the final game. Oh, thank you so much. Um, thank you for popping by. It's always good to see people come in and out and stuff. And especially streamers, because, yeah, I, I love love seeing people play the game um, live, because it's, like, feedback that I might not otherwise get. And because I'm working on it by myself, just getting playtesting is the, is the toughest thing to do. And I need it. So, anyway, have a good time. Have a good night or day or wherever it is. Whatever it is where you are. Hi, Justin Jeffy says, I look forward to our future where we can meet all of you in person at a convention. That would be, Justin Jeffy, that would be cool. Yeah, I don't, I really don't see myself going, I don't, I won't even go to the post office at this point right now. Um, so I don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon, of course, but one day. And Michael Darkwell says, Francisco is very happy to have a fan who played his freeware games. Yeah, I played all of Francisco's uh, f uh, freeware stuff, and and um, I think I like, I think I PayPal'd him like eight dollars or something, one for each of the eight, <laughs> one for each of the the Grindelwald games. That was back in the day, just to say thank you for doing this and being such an inspiration, something like that. Ah, uh, David, where you let you let me know for playtesting whenever you record playthroughs? I'm gonna write this down. Day of War, record, TCD playthroughs. See, I, I'm just, I'm j so when I said I'm getting through my feedback right now, the very first feedback email that I have saved from September 2020 um, was someone who sent me a very extensive um, list of stuff um, in terms of suggestions and notes and feedback. And I'm just, it's taking a long time to work through it because this person put a lot of work into it. And I just have to thank that person anonymously for all that feedback because it's really, really, really valuable and it is making the game better. So. Oh, and Dave, we're also um, the same, the same, uh, offers the same playtesting service to Cosmic Void 3 or Slats or whomever, which is really nice. <laughs> Amberzine says DOS good. I love that emoji by the way. <laughs> oh gosh, Jesse Jeffy, I know I was just oh my gosh, the kid thing sending the kids to school on Monday. I know. I don't even wanna oof. 
that's a, I just that's a toughie, really, honestly. Best of luck to you, and I mean that sincerely. It's just it's a rock and a hard place. Yeah, yeah, Omicron. It's the Omicron. Um, and so, yeah. So that's the... Uh, we're putting we're putting on hold the cards until, um, you know, things improve a little bit. But they are, they're waiting, they're sitting in a box in my room, and they're ready to be posted. All of it, so... The moment I feel safe enough to do so, I will. But I've my thing now is um, grocery shopping at seven o'clock in the morning. That's my thing now. And and I'm not an early riser, but uh, I will grocery shop at seven o'clock in the morning every two weeks. That's that's what I do now. Oh, you do yours right before closing, Blaholson. Oh, that's another good time. And Slash Studio, my gosh, best of luck for you for teaching in person. I have a lot of respect for you. For the past two years teaching in person and your kids have been in school. Absolutely, best of luck. And I just, yeah, teachers, you guys have it tough. And it's always been tough for teachers, but I don't think it's ever been as tough. So thank you. Thank you very much. Masuma says, I do find a lot of elderly people shopping in the early morning, though. Yeah, I have found that. And I, I, I was hoping that if I... Well, last time I went, it was 7.13 when I, when I um, got out of the car and to enter the, the, the grocery store. And there were more people there than I, than I was expecting. And I found that disappointing. Hi, uh, Justin Jeffy says, once this all the COVID is over, I think I'll prioritize going to every convention I ever wanted to go to. Always thought of myself as an introvert, but honestly, I miss people. Yeah, it, it, events will be nice. Yeah. It'll happen. I think it's just a slight snack time. Oh, that's true. Tika, Tika says, um, for here from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., it's recommended grocery time for seniors so they're not too exposed to the general population. Yeah, I think some stores do do that, but I think the store that I go to doesn't do that. Let's excuse the crunching. And Dave Voice says, I don't think I realized how much of an inter introvert I was until COVID. Glahalton says, I think introvert, extrovert is more if you relax more easily alone or with people, recharging social batteries and such. I have heard that too. And I've always wondered about that. And I guess that just speaks of me being an introvert. If I think I can't imagine people relaxing, having it be more relaxing to be around other people than not to be around other people. So I guess it just means I'm very, very introverted. I'm kind of liking how the water looks um, in the foreground, but in the background it looks too linear, so I'm going to figure something out for that. Yeah, introverted person can still be a social, per social person. Yeah, I, I definitely... I definitely agree with that, because I, I guess I'm an introverted person who can be extroverted if the situation calls for it. 
but I'm pretty happy on my own. Yes, I'm a little teapot, you're the same. Very sociable, but when you're alone, you definitely want to be alone. Me too. Aw, just a Jeffy, I appreciate that. Just a Jeffy says, thanks, A underscore Maple Mystery, for helping us through the sucky time. <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy Crimson Kid Tuesdays and it gives you something to look forward to. That's really sweet. Thank you. I appreciate it. It gives me something to look forward to. Look forward to, too, in fact. Um, socially, absolutely. Absolutely. Mmm, Black Holtz, you do a regular D&D sessions? Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, it's been, it's, this has been a really good experience. Streaming is something, yeah. It's something I'm surprised that I enjoy as much as I do. And yeah, the benefits of it have been just amazing, I think. So right now, yeah, I still have the, the, the selection um, for just the dark and light colors of the river. But with Control H, you can hide the marquee so you can actually see what you're doing, which is kind of nice. Ah, see, Blaholton was very social in college, but definitely had to run away to be alone occasionally. I was super not social in college, and I kind of regret it a little bit. I just did work nonstop, relentlessly. Oh, wow, Eden Wade says, My sister-in-law is very extroverted. Seeing her summer schedule packed with events every weekend made me tired just thinking about it. Hey, Eden Wade, I'm the same way. Yeah, I need to be like, okay, what's the plan today? Nothing. There is no plan. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Masmus, yikes. Sometimes I look forward to a work video call. That's how bad things got. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Jim Matt says, I love working on my own illustrations when your Twitch stream comes on, so thank you. Uh, I appreciate that too, and I love hearing that. When people say, you know, this is kind of a time they kind of designated getting some stuff done, you know. That's always nice to hear too, so thank you. Absolutely. Because I do, I do get some, I, we slowly have been working through things, um, the art stuff here on stream, which I do very much appreciate. Um, and this piece, as you see, it will be in the new version of the demo, as, long, as, as well as some of the other art that we've been working on together. Oh, Dave, will you play with coworkers? Blades in the dark. Yeah, Blah Holton. Yeah, meeting up with people. Yeah, it is super, super important, and it's just, it's yeah, it's really hard to do that, especially over the holidays, because you know that's when people want to, and it just was, it was just, it was like you just felt like you had to weigh all that against itself and it just felt bad to do it that way because you felt like you know oh you know I don't it's difficult because you're fighting with with your need to be social with this need for safety um I had that in mind today when I was working on something else where I took a children's literature uh, course in university and uh, one of the big themes in children's literature is security versus freedom and that's a big thing for kids to navigate. You know, I want to be safe and, you know, my parents want me to be safe. But, you know, that protection is also like a barrier and it keeps you from exploring and ex just seeing what you can do and, and all that. And there's that fine balance that, that kids and parents have to navigate for the kids. Um, how safe can I be? But too safe is not good and too free is not good either. And I felt that way over the holidays in terms of just trying to make decisions on how to be safe, but how to be free. And it doesn't feel good no matter how you slice it. Ah, the book Quiet by Susan Cain is a good reference for introversion. I wish that book was around when I was a teenager. Oh, I'm going to write that down. Quiet by Susan Cain.
<laughs> work call work call you feel is your only connection to the outside world yeah a day full of nothing planned planned is just see how i feel that that's the kind of day i like you know i don't want to have to show like have it in 30 30 minute blocks of okay this is what what's happening from this time to this time and you know here's the travel time and all that no i i i, I like that sometimes but definitely not my way to relax mm -hmm. Yeah, they have, yeah I, I was, a friend of mine was interested in trying uh, Dungeons and Dragons for the first time and I told her the hardest thing about Dungeons and Dragons like it's not the rules and it's not the playbook and it's not creating characters the hardest thing about Dungeons and Dragons is getting everyone in the same room at the same time that's half the battle Yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, just as Jeffrey was saying, being at home with the same people every day is difficult. <laughs> Need to talk with someone else once in a while. Variety, yeah, variety is a must. A mush. <laughs> oh, Dave, where you agree with the security versus safety? You know, and you feel like, you know, you're spiting one to do the other in a way. I forget that the, the turn of phrase. For that but uh, yeah it's, it's not a good time oh you agree with the worst part of role-playing games being scheduling yes yes I told my friend that I said you know <laughs> and that's always a problem and board games too just trying to get people together for multiple hours at a time super hard to do and you know it makes me feel like yeah i think most of us never really appreciated that when we were kids that people had all this free time yes and dave well, yeah so for planning a dnd &D group coming out ahead of time with the understanding that you'll play as long as you have like two or three people or something yeah so there has to be like plan B for okay well you know that that person that character is resting at an inn or something or you have to make those make those allowances yeah board games are not as bad they're not like an ongoing thing you don't want someone to miss out on that is a hundred percent true a hundred percent but for those for those people who don't play D D, like your yeah, board games can be challenging especially the ones that take multiple hours to play Time check, 10 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, so I feel like um, probably 10.30 I will start on Personal Nightmare. I almost feel like we could finish it tonight. And then I have to figure out how we're going to figure out the next thing. But I have, an, I have a week because hopefully Dan can stream next week. We'll see. Maybe we'll do combo stream again. Oh, uh, Slash Studio, Magic the Gathering. I played a little bit of Magic the Gathering. Um, I don't know where the cards are anymore, but yeah, that's a fun one too. Yeah, just to Jeffy, uh, you say you've always been intrigued by D&D, never, never got into it. Yeah, the, the, the trouble is finding a dungeon master and finding a really good one and finding people that, yeah, you could play together well with, you know? Um, because that can definitely make or break it. The dungeon master and, and who else is playing and how you all get along. Because that's another thing that makes it trickier than board games. It is, it is a collaborative exercise. In fact, going back to the Escapist and Yatsu Krosha, I think Escapist is doing um, some kind of Dungeons and Dragons campaign and they stream it. Um, so that's kind of cool. And Jack is the dungeon master. Jack Packard is a dungeon master. Um, and I think he's got some experience with that too. So that would be cool. I haven't checked out that part, so it might be fun to watch that and see what that's like. Oh, well, Flukas, welcome back. Yeah, 
Yeah, Blah Holtz. And yeah, I think it's really wise to have, you know, plans about, okay, well, you know, th this person's missing, then we do this instead, or play another thing, or maybe just do a module or something. That's just a quick module. I think, yeah, all that stuff. Because it's, you know, life is life. <laughs> yes, we're talking a lot, which I love, Jester Jeff. He says, but honestly, I think it means less art productivity. Yes, this is true, but this is, um, this is, you know, not high pri a high priority thing I'm doing right now. You know, I mean, I wouldn't be working on the stuff at all if it wasn't for the stream, even though it, it will eventually need to get done. <laughs> I could speed round finish Crim Crimson Diamond 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 tonight. Oh, text to speech, interesting. That's, that would be, I think that would be chaos, wouldn't it? Oh, Dave, well, you GM for you GM for people in the stream. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, so much conflict. The better the conversation, the less of our productivity. Maybe that's okay. It's okay. It's totally fine. You know, if we can have a nice time together like this, doing the art, getting some art done is a bonus. Yes, chill is priority. Masmus, you're correct. Mm. You can still. And Celeste, too, there's another one who's always painting backgrounds during Crimson Tuesday. Lots of productivity. So, yes. Yes. So, it's it's kind of productive. And it's other people are also productive in it. So, I'm, I'm happy to facilitate that. Absolutely. Just we're all in on it together. Luke is asking, Julia, quick question. Are you still using Creative Cloud? Or did you end up going back to your older CS versions? Lucas, this is Creative Cloud version of Photoshop. And I use it because it actually lags less on stream than Adobe um, CS2 Photoshop. Which is weird, but I guess it has something to do with uh, optimization. Um, so that's kind of strange. But that's why I actually ended up using it. And someone at Adobe was kind enough to, to kind of give me a, a, a trial version of it so I could try it out and see what I thought. And, and I found that on streaming, it's just way smoother than, than the CS2 was. And so I've stuck with it. Um, although, like full disclosure, I, he did also offer a discount ongoing for the subscription. Otherwise, it would be kind of steep for me. So, yeah. Um, I do have that and it does come with some nice like creative cloud storage which is also good and I use it all the time for my um, my Crimson Diamond Adventure Game Studio backups so it's it's pretty good for me but yeah I think I would stick if I was not streaming I would stick with CS2 but my streaming with CS2 was kind of just it it lagged so badly I was it was really d tough to get anything done I mean even tougher than than, than it is now. <laughs> yeah, and I still have massive. I still have problems with the stream freezing, and I don't know why. Like I, I've set up things better, and like using the the graphics card, the Nvidia that's in here, and all that, and making things work. Like those are the same settings that I tried with CS2, but for whatever reason, it just works better. Yes, Lucas, I am glad. Thank you. I'm glad I'm making it work too. Oh no, Blaholtzen, the latest Photoshop update removed my ex-normal plugins and my save for web legacy presets, and you're annoyed. Ugh. Yes, and back up your games, folks. Yes. Uh, yeah, why don't we take this opportunity to do a public service announcement to back up your games. Please, back up your games. Back up it up multiple places. You know, if you have, have multiple cloud services, back it up in multiple cloud services. Every day, 
when I finish working on the Crimson Diamond and also maybe multiple times a day if I'm working um, if I've gotten a lot of progress done in a day and I'm about to start on something else I'll, I'll create a save of the complete game um, and I'll zip it as a RAR because I'm old school and I don't I think RAR is a little a little bit smaller um, and I upload it to my Creative Cloud Adobe Creative Cloud my Google Drive my OneDrive I've got an external drive I have a copy of it on my desktop I back it up five places every time um, because yeah we're, we're not going down the ship's not going down Yes, and Flukas, yes, it can be hard to change, and sometimes changing stinks. As long as the tools work for the artist, that's all that matters, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been solid this stream, no freezing, and no one even remembers the muting incident anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Just have a timer that shows time since last backup works wonders. Well, Holton, you, you rely on everything on saving everything on Dropbox. I think you need I think you need more options. Have more options. I wouldn't rely on just one cloud service. I mean, maybe maybe you don't have to back it up in five different places like I do, but like I'm not. I go shopping. I go grocery shopping at seven o'clock in the morning every two weeks. So I'm the kind of person that's gonna back it up in five places. Um, your mileage may vary. <laughs> Yeah, sync, sync in several places, uh, external hard drive, yeah. <laughs> Lucas, you watched a mini documentary on the making of Myst. Hypercard, I never used Hypercard, interesting. Pro creators used a program called Hypercard on old, oh, that's why, old 90s Mac OS. Ooh, maybe I had it at school, actually. And you used Hypercard on an art project in college, it was amazing. I think, yeah, because most of the schools had Macs, and I, you know what, now that you say that, and you say it was for Max? I feel like I remember something like that. Hypercard. It's a great name. Very 90s. What grocery stores open at 7 a.m.? All the, the like the superstores, just a Jeffy, like the Great Canadian Superstores and the Loblaw Supercenters, all those places they open at 7. I, well, I don't know about all of them, but most of them do. So if you want to get up in the morning when it's still dark out and do your grocery shopping, you, this, this can be a thing you do. And that's actually what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. You know, so... That's my morning. Although I'm thinking maybe only going every three weeks and just buying fresh fruit, but also frozen fruit for when the fresh fruit inevitably runs out after the second week. Maybe I can stretch it out to every three weeks. Slash Studio! Too much fun tonight. It's past your bedtime. Have a great night. Have a great night, Slash Studio. And of course, Slash Studio is working on Betrayed Alliance 2, which is an EGA text parser game. Mist was a hypercard game. Oh. Oh, Deluxe Tux, you watch the sun come up every morning. And that sounds like a sad thing to me, but I'm sure it's very nice. Ah, there you go. Sobeys. 24 hours Sobeys nearby, just a Jeffy. 3 a.m. Perfect. I would do that. I'm up at 3 a.m. anyway. I could just go. <laughs> Backups from 20 years ago, Massimus. That's what you want. Oh, Blahalton loves sunrises. No, I don't, I don't like a sunrise because... I never, it's never usually me getting up to see it. It's, it's me seeing it from the wrong end, which is I stayed up all night. I've seen more sunrises that way than, uh, than getting up early. Yeah, eating with milk is the perishable thing that you can't stockpile. This is very true, eating with, um, 
that's the problem I've been having. The milk thing. But it depends how much drink you how much drink you milk, how much milk you drink. Also, you could get coffee made for coffee, which works okay. Um, as your dairy substitute. But that that is the thing. But milk actually will keep a fairly long time if you get the latest dates on it. Usually it's like for the month in the future if it hasn't been opened, so you could get away with three or four weeks. Oat milk, Fianasa says, is a good substitute. I've heard that oat milk is a new hot milk. And I, I am a fan of other, other types of like almond milk and stuff like that. Welcome to the chat, by the way, Fianasa. Almond milk only here, Mousima says, as recommended by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oat coffee cream in your coffee for years, but Halton says, oh, that sounds nice. Fiona, so, um, you're not, you know, you, well, we started at 8 Eastern and it's 1016 now. Um, you're not too late at all. And actually at 1030, we're going to be starting playing, I'm uh, not starting, continuing playing um, Personal Nightmare, which is a game from 1989, which is uh, scary. A scary game. Not scary that it's from 1989. It's just supposed to be a scary game. But I guess it's scary that it's from 1989. It gives an A if you've got bagged four liter milk. A. No, I don't do the bags. I just do, I don't actually drink a lot of milk, which I I want to fix. I only put I only use milk really for coffee and tea for the most part. Oh, almond milk, the thing is with almond milk is you got to be careful about how much sugar is in the almond milk and no completely unsweetened almond milk to me just tastes really super terrible and bland. Um, so I wonder what oat milk is like because I do quite like, I, I like oatmeal. I think oatmeal, oat milk might have more flavor, maybe. But I do like the idea of oat milk. Rasmus likes tracking and remembering stuff. I do not. It's what it's what I it's one of my things I don't do well. That's part of the reason why I have um, that notebook feature in the Crimson Diamond because I I don't remember stuff. So at the very least, it'll tell you what to do if you can't remember what to do. Although if you just follow the notebook. You will miss things, but that's the fun of it. That's the fun of replay replay value. So the game is, um, it is linear, but hopefully there'll be some replay value because there's stuff that you can miss on first playthrough. Oat milk does taste like oatmeal. Well, that's good because I do like the taste of oatmeal. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, not my tracking and remembering stuff is not my strong suit. That's why I write everything down. That's looking, yeah, that's looking nicer. OT and value make good oat stuff. Oh, I want to get oat milk next time just to see what I think. Yeah, that definitely helps. I think I wanted more shading. <laughs> Just as Jeffrey says, if you've been drinking only oat or rice or almond milk for a long time, or soy milk, try regular cow's milk, it's amazing. And I was, you know what, Jester Jeffrey, it's funny you say that because I was just thinking to myself, yeah, I've had other types of milk and coffee and tea, but I like the cowness of milk milk. But I do like the other stuff too because I find it really interesting. Because I, I kind of like bland flavors a lot of the time. Ooh, Oatly in Seattle. 
Uh, yeah, so the left side of the picture would be darker overall. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of what I was aiming for. Like, it's maybe I need to make that more obvious. Massimus, you're right. Like, I want that foreground water to be brighter and the, and the stuff in the rear to be um, darker. Yeah, so I might, what I might do is start breaking up some of those um, lines. Because it does, it is gradually doing that, but I need to probably emphasize that more. Like, at this magnification, you might see it better. But we're not, we're not obviously going to be playing at that magnification, so. Ah, uh, so Fiona, so you get sick drinking cow's milk. Yeah, that's a big thing. Ooh. Someone who produces Jersey milk, you pasteurize milk for work. The irony. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. I love the fact there's so many other options. Ah, oh, Blow Holton now gets grossed out by cow milk. Yeah, the concept of it is weird. And I will accept that and acknowledge it. SH Don, thank you for coming by. It's always good to see you. Um, there's so many game jam games that I do eventually want to want to play. I just I'm so bad about carving out that time for myself. But have a good night. Have a good night. My gosh, 420. Good to see you. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah, I, I do. I, I I just like and I can never really. I don't think I could really be a vegetarian although I think I would definitely cut down on meat overall but I just like I like the cowness of beef and pork the pigness of pork too much but I do think it'd be healthier for myself and the world you know to eat less meat and I don't really eat very much meat anyway but I don't think I would go completely without it oh eating with speaking of milk Today is apparently National Milk Day. Happy National Milk Day. Happy Crimson Milk Day. That doesn't sound good. Oh, good. Flukas, Happy New Year. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, Masmice tried vegetarian. Having someone introduce me to vegan food made the switch easy, Blaholtz and said. I, I do love the idea of, yeah, having a more plant-based diet. And I love beans. Like, I love beans and lentils and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see myself eating more of that kind of stuff, for sure. And overall, yeah, it is healthier to eat stuff like, I like lentils and things. Yeah, that's the thing, Blaholton, like there's a, like a lot of knowledge and stuff, that you, a lot of nutritional stuff people have to learn before they can be vegan properly you know um it, it can be done a hundred percent but you just have to really educate yourself on nutrition because it's, it's it's definitely trickier to eat, eat um like a full range of everything you need for your body um by restricting certain things but eminently doable and especially nowadays <laughs> just a general. Yeah, so when you occasionally go back to, to cow's milk, 2% tastes too good. <laughs> yes, yeah, in celebration of National Milk Day, the water in the Crimson Dime will be replaced with, will be replaced with milk. Um, we could we could do that. Um, we could make that happen. You know, we could just kind of... What do we got? Uh, the dark color... Uh, where's white? I actually, you know, I don't use a lot of white in um, in these shots. Ta-da! Happy National Milk Day, everybody! Yeah, there's so many options for healthy, like, meat alternative stuff that's tasty. And easy to, yeah, easy to stick in the oven, all that. Super good. I love grocery food, grocery store stuff, like the prepared stuff they have. I love it. Yes, and eating with, I've heard the same thing about simulating milk in like for commercials and stuff, and like ice cream too. Um, apparently they use lard for ice cream. Um, even on cereal boxes, they might use white glue instead of milk. I've also heard that. Yes, 
Yeah, and that's not, yeah, Blahotsen, 100%. Like, the, you don't have to, with meat, obviously, you have to cook it to a safe temperature before consuming, and vegetables, you don't have to worry about that nearly as much. Yeah, where are the cookies? Mmm, yum. Milk day. <laughs> so do you guys just eat the cookies alongside the milk or you do that dunking thing which kind of always kind of was weird to me yeah oh yeah I think I think there's definitely more of a, a market for for the vegetarian and vegan stuff than there ever has been they come up with all kinds of stuff I'm not a I'm not much of a dunking person with the food. I did I did used to eat cereal with the milk on top. But it was never really a big thing for me, that whole thing. I think it was mostly I did it cuz that's what you're supposed to do. But it, I think it always felt kind of weird for weird to me to do that. Okay, eating with dunks, cookies and milk. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't even. You know, biscotti. Even I don't dunk in anything. It's just weird to me. Although I will say that I have an Australian friend, Jess, who introduced me to the Tim Tam Slam, and that was pretty good. So I will never say never. But overall, I'm. J I don't like soggy food. Oops. I don't have the right thing selected. Anyone here heard of castorium use in ice cream? I feel like I've heard about that and then I forgot it. It's like castor, that stuff that comes out of beaver, beaver backsides. There's a gland beside the beaver backside that has something called castor and they use that in ice cream or something. I think. Is that is that what you're talking about, Justin Jeffy? Why is this happening? Oh, see, blah, hold so when I eat sweets, um, I I would oops, I usually will eat like have like a tea, like drink hot tea with it. Either hot black tea or hot green tea doesn't really matter, but I guess that's what I'm used to because that's what we, you know, did ever since I was a kid. Like snacks, wagashi or whatever it's called. Cuz just to keep the 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 sugar from really lingering on the palate too much, just counteracts all that sweetness. So, I will usually insist if I'm having a dessert to have some kind of a tea with it. It can be herbal too. I just need something. Yes, yes. Castoreum is a tasty additive. Comes from the beaver's anal gland. Yes, you read that correctly. Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, it's just about time. We're gonna go over to. We close this up. Let's get to Big Julia again. I, I changed my key bindings so that they don't affect the opacity levels of my um, Photoshop um, my Photoshop files anymore. So that's something else I did over the break. Um, yeah, hot chocolate. Lucas says, "Yeah, I, um, I remember there was a time when when." Starbucks had some sort of really rich, rich, rich um, hot chocolate, like ultra rich. And it was basically like they took chocolate ice cream and heated it up. And I'm not saying it wasn't good because it was, but it was really rich. But yes, we're going to we're going to move on to um, Personal Nightmare, which is, yeah, this beautiful 
I'm mirrored. Okay. There? That is a screenshot from Personal Nightmare. It's... It's, um... We're not gonna go too much about the recap of the game, but you basically... Real quick, you go back to your hometown in Tyndale, which is not a real city in England, or town in England, and, uh... You're looking for your father, because your mom says he's been behaving strangely, and he was the pastor at the church. Yes, unicorn hot chocolate. I don't know, it didn't have extra stuff in it. It was some ultra-rich thing. Yeah, it didn't have, like, whipped cream or... Or maybe it did. But I don't think it was a special candy sprinkle thing. Which I'm imagining unicorn would be. Show and tell Halloween. Uh, yeah, so this is not what we need, but... This is where I play personal nightmare okay so we are going to move on to personal nightmare um and yeah i will do a bit of a preamble before the part where we get stuck because i will be posting that as a completely separate helpful little video on youtube because i feel like it's yeah it's a place that you kind of get stuck on if you can't figure it out and it's tough to figure it out and you'll see why yeah nancy's moving to tyndale or whatever whatever it's called okay so let's start this up so the first thing i have to do Let's turn off our nice music. The second thing I have to do is I have to turn down desktop audio because this, especially during this section of the game, because it has um, really awful PC speaker stuff that we don't want to hear. Ooh, yeah, mom and pop dairy. So ice, Deluxe Talk says ice cream and fresh milk that comes in glass jars are meant to be returned to the store when you're done with them. That sounds amazing. Okay, yeah, we're going to get started on Personal Nightmare. Um, and yeah, maybe we can finish it today. Who knows? We'll try. Yeah, yeah, the immense sound is not good. Um, this is the PC version. There was a PC version and an Amiga version. This this is the PC EGA version with no night and day difference in color palette. And there's like three noises and they're all bad. So, you're welcome. <laughs> Let's get this going. No, you know, Justin Jeffrey, you do not want to hear this. I promise. Yeah, we're not even going to watch that, because that's the problem. Yeah, at least the developer tried to have sound. Kudos to them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I admire any effort, and this is 1989. So this is... They were figuring stuff out still. Um, so there's a lot here that I might not want to recreate for my own game, but they're good lessons to just be reminded of, I would say. Yeah, Sound in the Air was a pain. Uh, does everyone remember their first game to use a Sound Blaster or a Roland ad-lib card or anything like that? Because I, I'm pretty sure the first one was for me was King's Quest V. I think. And I think it blew me away. Yes, tell me your I Isn't it ICQ? Hmm. <laughs> Nineteen eighty nine they could have had Roland and chose not to. Okay, so let's do this. Restoring a saved nightmare. File name working. Okay. So this is the point where I'm gonna just quickly explain this section of the game. I tried to play this part before and I got stuck. The goal of this little section, it's kind of an arcade sequence, and the goal of this section is to cause a taxi to crash into a tree. And if you follow the, there's a couple different walkthroughs if you can try to follow that are pretty vague about this section and specifically how to do it. So I'm going to specifically say how to do it uh, and to move on to the next section of the game. Because I, there were a couple Let's Plays on YouTube that showed this. One of them was the PC version that had a commentary, but the person who was doing the, the play, playthrough, when they were having trouble with the section, they just edited to the next video where it was completed with no explanation of how they had done it. And the one that really helped me was there was an Amiga Let's Play for this section of the game with no commentary, but I was able to kind of figure out what the person was doing um, as I was watching their Let's Play. So that was super helpful. So very, very thankful and appreciative to both of those because it helped me figure this out. Okay. First thing we have to do is we're going to have to go north. And when we go north, we're going to be shown a black screen and there's going to be a car coming toward us. And what we have to do when we see that car is we have to move east. And as the car comes close to us, we have to move north. That's what we're going to do. Okay. 
Oh no, the sound is here. Oh no, what? Oh, you guys can't hear this. You can't, you can't hear this, right? Oh my gosh, it was just blasting in my ear. I'm so sorry. I just crashed it because I panicked. Okay, you can't hear it, but I can hear it. Okay, you know what? I'm taking this, I'm taking the ear, earbud off because that scared me. It did. Hold on. Um, I might, I might die. Did it pause? Okay, I'm going to restart. I'm so sorry. I panicked. I heard the awful sound and I thought I was subjecting you to that and I didn't want that to happen. So we're going to start again. Yay. Okay. Yeah. Bloop, bloop. No sound. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm just not going to hear anything. No ears on this. Okay. Oh, one short eye. Welcome to chat. You had a PC speaker sound without a sound card until the late 90s, and the plus side hearing old soundtracks with MT32 today is mind-blowing? Yes. Yes. 100%. <laughs> yeah, the Amiga had better sound. Definitely. Yeah, when, yeah, I'm not gonna listen to that. It's terrible. Ooh, okay. Yes, we love an MT32. Yeah, Dan, hopefully, if Dan can stream next week, We'll be working on some MT32 stuff. I was bugging Dan to deliver me the ragtime piece that he was doing because I would love to include that in the new version of the demo for people to enjoy, but I haven't bugged him about it recently, so we'll see. But yeah, so we're going to do this. File name is working. Yes, working. Okay, we're going to go north through this door. Here comes, here comes the car. Okay. We have to go and then north. You see, and the car swerves and kind of goes away. Great. So that that happened. But we have to. The thing is, is we have to keep doing this. So I have to go east now. And then I have to go north now. Okay, we have to do this about five times. So that's a good puzzle. And you have to wait until it's facing you again. As it comes forward, again, has to be facing. I'm going to go east. As it comes forward, go north. Here we go again. East and north. There we go. Yay, we crashed a car. Great, fantastic, save. Yay. Okay, so that's that. That is the section of Personal Nightmare that is a little bit tricky, and I hope this was helpful to you in your own playthrough if you decide that you want to attempt it. Yay. Yes, we're justified in trying to make it crash. <laughs> Your most must watch North by Northwest last weekend with the plane chasing the man. Yeah, this is basically the same. How would anyone work this out? What's the logic here? There is a bit... I don't know. Honestly... Yeah, I don't know how you'd figure this out. And it, with a walkthrough and the benefit of all the technology at my fingertips, it took me a while. Just a little while. But yeah, f happily, that's all done. Uh, and yeah, we can we can continue with the game as as normal. Okay, because okay, I'm gonna read you what it says in the playthrough. It says, while the car is still, go east, and then as it approaches, you go north. Repeat this pattern until the car crashes. Yeah. Anyway, we are, we've done it. Okay, go north. Open glove box. This is a nice screen, isn't it? Glove box. Okay. Um, take keys. Is there a key? Look in glove box. Okay, so there is a key. Set of keys initialed PM. Take key. Oh. I took it. Where'd it go? 
Oh no. Oh no. Where'd it go? Look in glove box. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, interesting mix of... I, I do love this. I think it's a great inter interior for a car. Okay, take the set of keys. There's no... It wasn't a set of keys. Anyway, go south twice. One, two. West and south. Okay. Unlock door. Unlock the door. Open door. Okay. Go south. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. Um, I'm gonna save car. Let's just enjoy this together for a second. This is it's uh, this game has great art. Um, I kind of wonder if there's any kind of online repository of all the screenshots as PNG form because it is lovely. I mean, this is something else. <laughs> Just a Jeffy, have a great night. Good night. Thanks for coming. Always good to see you. You know, there's so many things I want to do in, in, in this. I want to look in the car. Or, you know, oops, examine car. Large car. It's really quite some car. Open car. It already is. Examine car. Nope. Okay. Um, east. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. I did not realize this game was for mature audiences. Okay, um, examine desk. It is a rather tatty desk covered in papers. Can you imagine that this is made in England? Um, examine papers. Various bills and invoices to do with the garage. Amongst the papers is a bill. Take bill. Oh boy. Yeah, return west. West? Oh, wait. Is no examine bench? East. Examine bench. It is oily and dirty from the years of exposure, etc. Find goggles and a spanner. Take goggles. Mm -mm -mm. Can I put this ball of yarn in my coat? Great. Penny. Um, cross. Knife. Knife in coat. Nope. You can't fit the shoes in the razor. Okay. Coat. Nope. This is, this is fun. Okay. Take goggles. Wear goggles. Great. Take spanner. Wear gloves. See, I do have gloves, but Oh, you know what? Did I drop the gloves? Oh no, please don't tell me I, I dropped them. Oh, guys. Oh, guys. I think I dropped the gloves. I think I didn't need them. Oh no, oh, thank goodness. Okay, I have them. Here, let me get the gloves out of my pocket. Wear gloves. Okay. Okay. It's like, this is real life. I mean, this is like how I am in real life. Save. Pod. Oh, go. I gotta write down all these uh, save game names because there's no dialogue window for that so that's part of the part of the difficulty <laughs> yes gunner road i know i'm so sorry everyone <laughs> oh that's true that's true yeah the lady the lady's parts were, were pixelated after all so maybe we maybe we'll get away with it <laughs> no suspend please Yeah, being able to put this stuff in other items is kind of like the Mac, Mac Venture game Deja Vu. I, I really actually love putting stuff in other stuff as an inventory thing, but I, I wish, you know, we had a bag with more slots in it 
That was always the thing in World of Warcraft, is you wanted that new bag and they knew it. They knew you'd pay any amount of money for that, you know, 32 slot bag or whatever. Yeah, there's no mercy here. Yeah, yeah, Gunder, Gunder Road, um, yeah, this is definitely a lot like Elvira and Waxworks, because, yeah, these are the same guys that made, made those ones. So, I can see why you'd definitely say that. <laughs> Crush would go to add a thing for the x-ray glasses, too. Okay, so, we're gonna go west again. Okay, we're going to light torch. Okay, intensely bright. Cut the hook with the torch. Cut hook with torch. Cut the hook from the block and tackle. Take hook. <laughs> Can we put our Bible in our coat? Yes. I wonder what would happen if we tried to do this with the goggles on you guys. Okay, we're gonna try that. Um, but first take hook. Save. Uh, oh, I should count. One, two, three, four, five. I want to try to do it without the glasses on. Is that okay? Indulge me. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Gunner Road, I have not played They Came From The Desert, but I've, I watched Crowley9, I believe his name is, on YouTube play it, and that game is intriguing. It's very strange, but I, I'm kind of fascinated with this. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we're going to try to do this. So I'm going to load the game. Load. <gasps> load, you need to keep... Okay, well, I'm sure I can fit. Okay, so we're going to go to car. No, ga. We're, we're going to go... We're going to load ga. Because ga is the one where we're, we're wearing everything, right? Remove goggles. Okay, we're gonna go west. Light torch. The torch flares up intensely bright. You have to shut the torch off because your eyes cannot stand its brightness. First of all, first of all, there's a grammatical spelling thing going on here, but that's okay. Second of all, how nice they didn't they didn't blind us with the torch. What if we oh what if we don't have the gloves on? Remove gloves. Wear goggles. I just, I need to know. Light torch. Okay, the light, okay, intensely bright. Cut hook with torch. As you try to cut the hook off, it becomes too hot to handle and you have to stop. Well, look at this. This is almost like a baby game now. Yeah. Oh, Gunderoad, you know, Carly 9. Yes, so you're in a, you're um, you're among the uh, the old timer people who watched um, Let's Plays from Her Crabbiness and Let's uh, Let uh, Light Blight and Crowley Nine. Yeah, I watched all those guys too, or those people too. Um, good times, and I'm glad you're from that time as well. Yeah, and that's another thing. My my, when you read the newspaper in the demo for the Crimson Diamond, there is um, a Late Blight uh, reference to that and to uh, as well in that. Yeah, I kind of thought that they, we, our hand would get burnt off, or our retinas would get burnt out, or something, but no. And I am uh, just a little bit disappointed. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, press red button. Whoa, look, it's an animation. Go east. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. Okay, go east and get get under the car. What? Get under car? What is that? How do I get under the car? Go east. Oh. No. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. Okay. Um wipe the nut with your rag. How do I get under the car? Under car? Oh, under... No! Oh no! Um, hold on. How do I get under the car? 
get under car. What is that? Cut. Go east, then get under the car. North? No, it's not north. North is leaving. West, east, east. What else is on here, by the way? No. How do I get under the car? Down? Nope. Go under car? <gasps> okay, great. Okay, here's the knot. Examine sump knot. It is used to allow oil to be drained from the car. Why do I have to rub the knot? Can I just... Can I just not? I want to see what happens. Save. Uh, not? No. Uh, no. Uh, no. I'll just say not. I'm not going to wipe the nut. Turn nut with spanner. Turn nut with spanner. The nut is very oily and the spanner keeps slipping. Okay. Yeah, Gunderwood, I, I agree. Like some, like Circuit's Edge, all, like, yeah, super cool. Like Neuromancer. Um, wipe nut with rag. Okay. Turn nut with spanner. Oil pours from the sump down onto the floor. Put oil stone in oil. This all makes perfect sense, by the way. Ooh, where is the oil stone? Give me, give, I'm sorry. Un moment, un s'il vous plaît. Where's my, where's my, where's my, oh, oh, did I dump the oil stone? Oh, please. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, is this it? Yes. Okay. Yes, Rise of the Dragon Deluxe Tux, another good one. Yeah, and oh, um, Deluxe Tux, we do wrench in Canada. I could have sworn I played the EGA version of Rise of the Dragon, and I would love to do that again. Yes, Bilkin, you've never learned how to change your own oil. Now you've encountered an adventure game that is forcing you to learn how, but only in in uh, if if you're in Britain with a British car. Um, put oil stone in oil. Come on, what did I just do? Put oil stone in oil. Okay. Can I take? Oil stone? Is it still there? Taken. Sharpen axe with oil stone. Sharpen axe with oil stone. Okay. Save. Axe. Doing well. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, a wrench does not have a movable jaw. A spanner wrench is a specific type of wrench. That's okay. That makes sense because it's span. It's oh, spanning the span. Nice. I learn all kinds of stuff. Okay, walk west, east, north three times. One, two, three. Uh, east eight. Oh, west eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. North four times. One, two, three, four. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this. Okay, save. Manner. Let's just take a pause because I want to just dissect this screenshot a bit because I think it's really nice. Uh, manner. Right now, I'm kind of freaked out that I didn't accidentally throw things away that I need right now. Yeah, the change in perspective on the race car was nice. You're still stuck on the sharpening an axe with the motor oil puzzle? <laughs> Deluxe Tux, what do you mean? You don't do this, like, all the time? At your job? But look, I would like to, like, look at this. Look at this limited palette. It's, they're using 
one, two, three, four, five, what, six colors maybe here? And what I love is, this is this is the magic of, of EGA to me. Oh, I can't, okay, so look around this doorway. We've got, they're using the darker version of the blue and the darker version of the gray to give this feeling of, you know, this is dirtiness. I love that. And even here, it's impinging on the door frame. The, the door frame is like three different colors here, at least. Here. And then we actually have some dithering here, which they don't do a lot of in this game. Here. I think this is a really nice, simple screen. And I, what I love is this, this door, too. Like, look. The edge that's facing us is brighter. It's warm red. And the receding door is that cool blue. Which is really nice. A nice choice. Very elegant. Okay. Tie rope to hook. I don't look. You're staying in the manor entrance. Okay, high above you. There's banisters. Staircase winds around. Um, tie rope to. Oh, because we're holding a rope. Okay, tie rope to hook. Do we even have a rope? Every time I I need to do something with my inventory, I'm gonna grimace and because I think I don't have it every time. I have yarn, but I don't have a... Where's the rope? Oh my gosh. Is this my own pride where I said, Oh, I'm almost finished this game. Where's the rope? What did I do with the rope? Oh no. Yes, the image is unsettling. Now, the most unsettling is where... Where did I put the rope? Come on. Have mercy. I'm not going to remember where it is. Because I, I, I clearly dropped it somewhere. <sighs> Let's jog my memory. Where did I get it? Uh. Okay, let's, let's go backwards. Can I just use the wool? Can I can I try that? Tie wool to hook? No. What? Well, why don't we try using the wool, you guys? Because that thing's a penny beside the wool. It's not going to work. I... Tie wool to hook. Michael Darkwolf, have a great night. Thanks for coming. What's on the right? What's on the right? I don't nothing. This is all nothing. I'm just give me a second. Yes, I had a problem to this is you don't even know which items you need to beat the game, which items are red herrings. Oh boy. Okay, so why don't we start... Okay, let's start from the beginning. Let's find rope. I must have used it for something else. I wouldn't have felt safe throwing it away. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Maybe this is what Retrograde Tom said about getting soft locked. Well, yeah, watch this interesting part where I just consult this, looking for the rope. Cut the rope with your secateurs. Okay. Right. Okay, where is this? Post office. Okay. From the mailbox, I, I know where the rope is. Where, the, where it was. One moment, please. And I can't even really navigate this game that well because of the way the compass works. Okay. We're just we're just gonna we're gonna find the rope and then we're gonna when we find it, it's gonna be fine. 
First, we have to find the post office, which I'm not entirely confident I can just find on my own. Okay, let's turn around and go the other way. Okay, there it is. Okay. Look. Okay, post office. Okay. Room. Okay, so from the post office, um, okay. Post, 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 okay, go north, west four times. One, two, three, four, north three times. One. What, what is this? Why are there people here? What happened? The figures crowd around closer. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to load, we're going to load, we're going to load an earlier save game. We're, that's what we're going to do. Yes, please, I want to play it again. Yes, absolutely. You wish to, yes, absolutely. Okay. Stream two. Okay. So from here, go north. Oh, wait. Okay, go po post, 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 post. Go north. West four times. One, two, three, four. North three times. One, two, three, up. Did it, okay, so is there a rope here? Okay, okay, it's gonna be fine. Cut rope. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna just pick up just like nothing happened. Okay, okay. What? Everything is under control. We'll be fine. Everything's great. Probably don't need this ball of wool. It's fine. Right. <laughs> relax. Most of us are saying relax. It's gonna be fine. It's totally fine. I could have sworn I took this gosh darn rope down. Get rope. What does it look like? I don't remember this icon. I must have got it though. It says drop secateurs, so that's going to be fine. Um, exit. Let's save this. Drop secateurs. Right, and we don't use secateurs in Canada. I don't know what these are. Yeah, why this inventory system? Why? I guess it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, drop. Everything is fine. Totally fine. Okay. Go south. Go west three times. So, go west three times. One, two, three. South and... What? Three. What do you mean I can't go into the bar? Where's the bar? I can't, I can't. I have no sense of direction. Where's the bar? Where's the bar? Where's the bar? Where's the bar? There it is. No, oh, it's not even. It's locked. Unlock door. Go south into bar. Unlock bar. Unlock side door. Okay. Pope pruning shears, Bill Holton says, our secateurs. Okay. 
spell it with an O. Freening Shores. Save might be bad. It's we'll see. We'll see. All we have to do is wait until the clock is struck. Okay, see, there's no one here, so I can take the bugle. So that's all we really needed to do. Great. Okay. Open small door. Go east. Go up. And we're just going to go to bed. We're going to be fine. It's fine. East, northeast. We're going to be fine. Close door. And we're going to sleep. So we're back to day three. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. My pen is running out of ink. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Are there numbers of slave slots? Slave slots. Number of slave slots limited? It says as long as I have room on my computer, it should be okay. So I hope it's going to be okay. Ooh. Francisco uh, told me, speaking of save slots, that Adventure Game Studio, there's a 50 save slot limit. So that's not dictated by just um, how much space you have on your computer. So I added that message to my save window. There's a, five, a 50 slot limit. Guess how I found that out? Um, I was testing and I had a lot of saves and it stopped saving and I freaked out. Then I asked Francisco and he said it's okay. So... And then I lived happily ever after. Okay, it's going to. Uh, sleep. It's too early in the day. I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. When can I go to sleep? Can I go to sleep at 5? Can I go to sleep at 7? Why is there... Oh, blow? No! I did it! <sighs> um, Bill can ask, does a 50 slot AGS limit still apply if you change directory like in a Sierra game? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Narcissus was telling me I should just, I, I should, um, go to bed. Yeah, I should. Okay, just let me get to day three. Just let me get to day three. I don't know why there was a car outside, though. That kind of bothers me. Um, just let me get to day three. Let me blow that bugle. And then, then we'll call it. can go to sleep at 6, right? Let's save. <laughs> yes, recharge for the final battle. Gun to road. Yeah, the game is devilishly hard. It is definitely intense. Too many ways to soft lock. We're back at day 3. Um... <sighs> Which, you know what? That's okay. That's okay because it'll have to be. Say three is what I meant. Say three. Okay. Great. At least we're, we're you know, until I find, find out I'm missing something else. We were saved. We're at day three. No harm done, except we wasted our time. But what does that mean when we're having such a nice time together, right? Right? Right. Yes, the soldiers. We're done. Okay. It's 11. Um, we are going to call it a night. I'm going to find someone to raid. We're going to find someone to raid. So, let me um, load up my Twitch on the computer. We'll find someone to raid. Next week, I have not asked Dan yet. It could very well be we pick up where we left off tonight, which is the water. For the pixel art 
we might be back to my personal nightmare playthrough. Um, or it could be a combo stream with Dan where we do some music. We might work on the ragtime piece again because Dan said he wants to fix it up and make it sure that it loops. So when um, new players to the demo start up the intro sequence, there will be the ragtime piece, which would be nice. But uh, I'll let you know next Tuesday what, what we come up with. There will be something, I promise. Well, I don't promise. Most likely. Gunder Road, have a great night. Thanks for coming by. Night Deluxe Tux. Thank you, Blahelson. Yeah, I, I, I hopefully have saved the playthrough. Oh, Fiona, so wonderful. Thank you for coming by. Good to see you. Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you, Ambersteen. Also, thank you for being here as well and for your support. I appreciate it very much. And the Milk River. Yes, the Milk River. Yeah, <laughs> Blue Kiss. Thank you for clipping the... The Milk River. I appreciate it. Good night, One Short Eye. Blaholton, good night. Nasimus, thank you so much for coming, you guys. I'm looking I'm looking for a raid. Let me stick my earphone back in. See you next week for another Crimson Katoos Day. Uh, thanks for being patient for the two weeks of being off. Um, it's nice to be back and get, getting back into it. So, yes. Oh, my gosh. I hope I'm okay with the personal nightmare stuff. We'll find out. Okay, let's find someone to raid. Um, so first thing uh, we do when we, I didn't even change my tag to personal nightmare. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Flu, because I will definitely check that out when I when I get on, when when I get the raid on. First thing we look for is the crimson diamond. One of these days there will be someone live with it. That isn't me. Okay, no one's playing it right now. Colonel's bequest is what we look up next. No, no one is playing currently the Colonel's Bequest. Who's playing on my list? Who's playing? Who is playing stuff? Huh. Let's see. I don't know. Does anyone have any suggestions for raiding? We can also look up anyone playing Lamplight City, which we tend to do. No. What else? Looking not much today. Sax Theory is on, Fianasa says. Do I have Sax Theory on mine? You know what I don't? Like, Dan, didn't Dan raid Sax Theory the other night? Uh, the gent we uh, raided playing Gabriel Knight is playing Gabriel Knight 2 now. Robo Spacer. Robot Spacer. I, I can't believe I'm actually not following Sax Theory because I know that the friend of Dan's. What's Sax Theory playing? Is he playing something or is he playing a sax? Bard Stream. Everfall. I don't know what a. Ever, what's Everfall? <laughs> Blowson says all I've got is people you've raided before and a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> Aren't we all just a little? And more so now than any of us would care to admit. Sax Theory is playing Oh, he's playing Sax? He's playing a Sax. Okay. Oh that yes, he was doing that last time. Yeah, he's playing he's playing um, requests in New World. That's right. Goat versus fish. Blowson, I don't even want to know. Yeah, um, yeah, so we're not going to do the sax theory because we what we did rate the sax theory with Dan the other night. Um, and uh, he was playing um, he was playing live music in uh, New World the other time. So you know what? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Let us look. Why don't we... Yeah, like, you know what? Why don't we check out Robot Spacer again playing The Beast Within, day two. Wonderful. Oh, hey, Bur hi, Bur Hazard. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Oh, Maniac Mansion might be good, Nosimus. Um, I'm just going to give a quick shout out to hi, Bur Hazard, who is an affiliate on Twitch now. Good to see you. Hi, Bur underscore Hazard. Great. Great. Yes. 
who has a bit of a like um kind of random here and here and there uh, uh twitch schedule hybrid hazard does so definitely follow him to let to know when he goes live let's find out auto robin ch robin ch auto robin ch playing maniac mansion all endings check that out Speaking of EGA, you know we like our EGA. And we like to also um, raid new folk, too. Oh, wait, this is... what happened? Oh, wait. Oh, nice. Okay, so Auto Robin Sage, All Endings, Ma Maniac Mansion, NVTuber. I don't know what an NVTuber is. But it's a VTuber because there's a nice cute little avatar thing, which I love these avatars. Cool. No backseating for this one, by the way, you guys. I know we're all pretty f familiar with um, Maniac Mansion. But oh, these EG graphics are so good. Mark Ferrari, I think? Okay, we're gonna raid. We're gonna raid... Auto Robin uh, Raid Someone new. It's fun to raid new people. New Auto Robin CH. And our raid message is going to be um, EGA Forever Raiders. And if you have any Crimson Diamond emotes or whatever, do those. EGA for life. That's even better. Okay, new raid, new raid, new raid thing. EGA for life and whatever you've got. New, okay. EGA for Life is a raid message. We're going to check out what um, Auto Robin CH is up to enjoying a classic. Oh, there's even wallpaper in this game. Wonderful. It's so good. It's so good. This game has a lot in common with Personal Nightmare. It also has a, a film developing puzzle. But remember, no backseating with this one. It's kind of cool to see someone play this. As it is. Oh, the lighting is so good. Okay. What? Why is this? Why, why is my raid countdown not doing a thing? Okay, I'm just going to raid now because the raid countdown is not going. It seems like we've got a lot of people. Let's do this. See you there. 